we would have said that. What happened? We live now. What happened? All right, don't worry about it. We good. We good. We good. We good. Let me see if we good on the YouTube end, and we finna rock out. Show the time we need to get on there. Yeah, this fancy. Y'all, y'all doing it big. So mm-hmm. right. Yeah, this this cool. We'll be right back, y'all, in just a second. We're gonna play some music and then we'll get straight into this episode. <laughs> Now this just is one of them occasions when the homie's not doing it right. How many find myself strolling through life? But you can't walk this way through our life. And when it all boils down, you gon' find at the end. A sucker is a sucker, and a friend is a friend. So what? Like you strolling through life. But you can't walk that way in this life. Gotta liberate the minds of the ones that's gon' fight for us. No time to hesitate, we gotta water this dry forest. So many calm, you are chosen. Uh, how can we be free? What fear is interwoven? Recognize the fact our lifestyle was doomed. Uh, Snuff our lights out with composure. Now everything is church. Confession is open. We think we're blessed, but we were stripped from emotions. Naked and afraid of the land we were stolen. The beautiful mother continent of this whole shit. Some oh, claim to be an idiot. Uh, That's an old trick. Gurgitating, we have no evidence for old ships. That's just old fake news on a new clip. Better watch out who you dealing with. I won't stand no anti-African <laughs> testament. I'm a different class of revolution. I get it in. Like Dr. John Henry Clark said, listen, we don't have many friends. None. So you can stand for the truth or fall for a lie. But if you choose to fall for a lie, what a demise. It's your life to commit intellectual suicide. Now this just is one of the occasions where the homie's not doing it right. How many find themselves strolling through life? But you can't walk this way through wild life. And when it all boils down, you gon' find it the end. A suck is a suck, and a friend is a friend. So what? That you stroll it through life. But you can't walk that way through this life. Gotta liberate the minds of the ones that's gon' fight for us. I like the water. No time to hesitate. Gotta water this dry force. Like the hope and the rest that swear and die for it. And for the ones that served, I know they'll snipe for us. Casey, you cold for this one. Casey. Now this just is one of them occasions when the homie's not doing it right. How many find themselves strolling through life? But you can't walk this way through wild life. And when it all boils down, you gon' find at the end. A sucker is a sucker. And a friend is a friend. So what? That's strolling through life. But you can't walk that way in this life. <laughs> My man changed the camera angles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who, who's that rapping, Kobe? Who's that rapper? That's uh uh M Bongala. That's one of my partners, man. I got a bunch of songs that he is. Uh, he's from California. I can tell. I can tell. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. I, I was gonna start. I was gonna start. <laughs> oh, you better start walking up. He ain't no dad's big boogie. Yeah, okay, okay. Well, y'all, welcome to the Griot Podcast. Um, I am Kofi Piche. Uh, I am a writer, a author, a podcaster, a, a publisher, uh, amongst other things. And yes, I am Sean P. I ain't nobody. Not just playing. I am Sean P. from the Sean P. Presents Podcast. I am also a public speaker, podcast host, educator instructor amongst other things man let's get it all right so today on this episode this episode is entitled let's stay together so we have some special guests in the building today we have uh sarita and nikki from sip then read can y'all briefly introduce yourself to the listening audience Hello, how y'all doing? So I'm Sarita. I'm Nikki. I'm your older sister. She's your younger sister. Um, we're just two girls that love to read. Yes, yes, yes. 
And we're gonna get in all y'all business today. Um all up in there. Yes. 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 Is that what I should have did it? That's supposed okay. to happen. So so yes. let's, 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 let's do it again. Nigga said go. I missed my opportunity. So. Yes, no, we, we're doing it right now. Three, two, <laughs> one, action. And we're your favorite sister. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, That's we, we, we want y'all to be y'all self. Please be yourself. <laughs> I want the full the full experience, man. Right, 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 right. We're so not people, usually on this side, so this is a little yeah, different for us. True, so y'all gonna have to bear with us. It's all yeah, good. It, so, yeah. so Nikki, what is the drink for tonight? Uh, it's just a little concoction I was playing with. It's some um, pineapple rum, and I don't remember what the two juices I mixed are, but I was just playing with it. I the recipe I originally was gonna do didn't work. So, we just wanted something pink, you know, so match that we the vibe. Be with the vibe and all. Coordinate. Get the coordinate. Mm -hmm. okay. You know how we feel about coordination. Right, right, right. We yes. do the same thing over here. I, I believe in uni you know, being in uniform or unification. <laughs> we all on the same thing. So right. Right. you know, so and you mentioned pink. So we all in pink tonight because um, pink. you know, you know, uh breast awareness uh month was last month. We were supposed to shoot the last episode at the end of October and breast yes. awareness ended a few days ago. So we still want to dedicate this show to uh uh those women who are you know who has been fighting breast cancer, you know, those who have recovered and rent in remission from breast cancer, right? So um I want to talk real quick before we get into that cuz that's a serious issue and that's a serious issue that is, is you know um when we look at the stacks it's affecting our black women um more than any other uh women right now right so um I think it's important for me to just go through something real quick it says um this show is dedicated to those who have been uh beaten has beaten breast cancer fighting breast cancer and those who have lost their lives to breast cancer Right, the leading cause is genetic mutations. It's up to 15% of breast cancer has called or caused a case of causing inherited genetic mutation. The most common mutation involves BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes. Smoking, tobacco use been linked to many different types of cancers, including breast cancer. And that's something that I didn't even know. I didn't know. I know um smoking leads to you know, cancer, but I didn't know that smoking leads to breast cancer as well, right? So age, getting older is the most significant risk of developing breast cancer. Most breast cancers, 80% occurs in women over the ages of 50. Dense breast tissue. Women with dense breast tissue have less fat and more breast cells is connected tissue to their breast. So these are some of the leading causes to uh, breast cancer, you know, age, smoking genetic mutation when we're talking about the different strands uh in in your genes look that up b again look that up brca2 and br um what is it brca1 look those up right all right so now that we got that out the way let's Thank get you into for the sharing that kofi those mm -hmm. are a lot of those um i didn't know about the um <clears throat> the smoking and things and i really didn't know that it attacked most at a certain age so thank you for mm -hmm. sharing that with us mm -hmm. no, no doubt no doubt yeah. so this segment is the opening on open honoring segment so in this segment we always want to open the show up with honoring someone from um the past right so uh so nathan it's on you yes sir so who i'm honoring today is uh, my favorite fictional writer of all times. I credit this man for even giving me the spark to want to write myself. That is our late, great Eric Jerome Dickey. Rest in peace. Eric Jerome Dickey was an American author. He wrote several crime novels involving grifters, ex-cons, assassins, and the latter novels having more diverse settings, moving from Los Angeles to the United Kingdom to the West Indies, each having an international cast of characters, right? So I want to say this outside of what I just read the bio, Eric Jerome Dickey, man, like my first time being 18, 19 years old, and this man writing these amazing characters and this vivid imagery, he was always so detailed with it. It really made me want to feel like, man, I wonder if I can write something like that. Could I create a character like that? Could I make a setting like that? So he really, really sparked me to want to even want to pick up the pen and start writing. So uh, when I asked a lot of current day writers who their favorite person was, a lot of guys in particular say Eric Jerome Dickey, so major figure. Okay, 
definitely, most definitely. All right, so today I'm going to highlight Kenya Parrish. It's kind of lengthy. This sister here has, uh, I mean, she's been writing her butt off. So Carrie uh, Perrin has a Bachelor in Arts and English uh, social, uh, uh, Psychology and a Bachelor in Education, having entertained the ideal of becoming a teacher. But she also knew she wanted to be a writer. Teachers were being laid off in Toronto when Kayla uh, graduated with her B. B. Uh, Ed frustrated she used her time to pursue her lifelong dreams of becoming a published author and provide, um, 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 what is that? And prove that dreams can come true. Indeed, not landing a teacher job was a blessing in disguise. Today, she is a multi-published, award-winning U.S. Today and Essen bestseller author with close to 50 novels uh, and novelists That's in print crazy. as of August of 2013, right? So she has an impressive resume. Um, I'm going to share some of the list of the books that she have, right? Yeah. Some of the list of the books she have, like she is, uh, will never tell a novel. Will never tell, uh, free, free fall of desire. Um, what is that? Say you need me. Spring break. If you want me. Give me an O, single mama drama, single mama drama, island fant uh, fan fantasy. Uh, what is that? Kimani hottest book two, the island fantasy, Kimani book two, burning desire, love on fire book one, burning desire, love on fire book two, cold consent, uh, suspect, cold, uh, suspect, taste of desire, a romance book 249, taste of desire. Uh, Kimani romance, uh, uh, obsession, obsession, and control. And these are just some of the books she has so, written tons of books. So, Kofi, I know it's not really your main genre to go to. So, how did you find out about the sister? I never even heard about it at all. So, how did you know about the sister? Well, I was, I'm, I'm, I'm actually reading something else, and um, right now, I'm reading a novel right now, and I'm gonna I'm share some of it later on when we get to the woman segment. This other other young lady um novel matter of fact hold on listen right here uh real men knit right and this is by oh, this you pulled that yeah by kawana jackson so you know kind of from from her which this is a good piece as well the other camera cool. the other camera put put the book you got so many cameras there that, that's the one that's the one yeah. yeah he got a whole sports center set over there he got the Where's my camera? He's on that way. <laughs> yeah, so we're we're gonna get into her a little bit uh later. Okay. Phenomenal writer, she's a phenom the phenomenal writing in that book, is, um, by the way. Okay. Um, so let's get into it, man. So our sponsor segment for the day, we yeah. always have to give it up to our sponsor, right? So our sponsor segment, um, we want to shout out Tracy George. Tracy George business is village seed. Village Seed is based on the river is based out of Riverside, California, and it's it's about coming together as a village and spreading the seed of knowledge by recommendation, donating, or selling books. It's focused on building relationships within our community to provide support and awareness. So this is our sponsor, Village Seeded by Tracy George. So we always want to give it up to Tracy George, and while we're doing commercial right now. If you don't have the modern day griot and griotes, the new generation, uh, please go to same tree, different brands, publishing.com and get you a copy of me and Shanathan's new publication. All right. We got music. We got commercial breaks. We got cameras. I mean, Y'all official. Man, it's, up. it's up. It's up. All right. So the griot, we always each. You know, we always alter different things when we doing um, our podcast. We have an outline of, uh, of, of different segments that we're going to do. We'll never remove the Griot segment, right? Because this is what this podcast is all about, the Griot segment. So um, we're not going, we don't have to read the slides, but, I'll let, you know, for people that don't know what a Griot is, you know, this is, uh, an important figure, important male figure and important female figure, right? They facilitate so many different roles. A griot is a, not only a storyteller, because most people know griots uh, are griotes to be storytellers, but they're not only storytellers, they're teachers. 
that only teachers, they're warriors. They're not only warriors, they are ambassadors. They're not only ambassadors, they are advisors. They're not only um, advisors, they are musicians. They're not only musicians, they are poets. They're not only poets, they are singers, right? They're not only singers, they are Elysium between the youth uh, and the elders, right? So, uh, and they are also historians, right? So they preserve the history and the culture of their society or, or, or their families, right? So the griots play many, many important roles and it's all about preserving their culture, um, their history and their contributions. So now and if they want a more detailed description of the griot and the, the geography and all the breakdown, definitely get the book, the whole chapter one, Will give you everything you need on Grio and Griotes. Exactly. Exactly. So, but by now, most of the people that's been following us, they kind of know, but we always have somebody that knew that come and don't know what a Griot is. So, we'll never take that segment out. So, let's get into uh, the Sip and Read segment. Drum roll, please. <laughs> so, let's get into it. Let's give a, uh, I want to give a, Let's see if I got it on. Let's give it a plug. Here's my theme music. All right. Oh my goodness. I have no. <laughs> so we want to give y'all, we want to give a plug, y'all. I definitely want to plug that. Right. So, you know, we want to give, now we want to get into all the Sipton Reed because a lot of people on here right now. the fireworks come. Right. May not That's know fireworks. who Sipton Reed in. So we want to get into uh y'all business so people can be aware of who y'all are our listening audience can be aware of who y'all are and go check out and see how dope y'all um y'all are you know see how thank you you know so you know we we so it's, we're going to kind of go back and forth and ask questions um you know sean asks a question i ask a question you know we're just going to kind of go back and forth you know and um you know, like I said, get into your business and let people know exactly who y'all are, man. And, and um, you know, and see, you know, and let them know a lot of stuff that y'all got going on, right? A lot of impressive stuff that y'all got going impressive. on, by the way. Impressive. Um, so, you know, let's get into it. Okay. I'm shooting first? Yes, sir. Okay. So, so my Sibden Reed sisters, I want the audience to hear the wonderful origin story of Sibden Reed. I'm talking about before uh, Instagram, before all the social media, like, you guys started with a real home base and things like that. So give us that story, please. Um, okay, so I have three kids and um, um, my daughter is the middle child. And she was just kind of like going through a time where she was acting shy and not giving real middle child energy. You know, normally the middle <laughs> child is loud. They want all the attention. That's not true. As a middle child, I don't contest to that. <laughs> so I hate you. <laughs> but she kind of had fell into herself a little bit. And I just felt like she needed something. And this was a child that left kindergarten reading Harry Potter. Like her vocabulary was major. She was such a good reader. And there would be times when I'm trying to have a conversation with her and she would be like, uh, uh, and, and I'm like, use your words. Like, what are you talking about? What's going on here? And then I kind of felt like she was also just pulling away. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to do something where it could be something with me and her. And we love Nikki. We're together all the time. So I was like, you know what? Let's just make a book club, right? And, you know, it sounds boring, right? To have a book club with your mom and your aunt. It was not, you guys, it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. Like it, it helped with her vocabulary. It helped with her confidence on speaking. Mm -hmm. um, it brought us together more as like a family mm -hmm. um, and her creativity as well. Um, the way it was, each person got to pick a book and each person got to host. So when it was her turn to host, she had to come up with an idea. She had to set it up all by herself. Like she was given the money to go and purchase the things. She had to speak to like cashiers and like fully immerse herself. And it just, she blossomed. Mm -hmm. I think the subjects of the books helped her blossom. It created deeper conversation. The first book we ever did was The Hate You Give by yes. Angie Thomas. I saw that. Yes. yes. And it just, it brought out so many emotions. It brought out so many discussions. And she had a completely different view coming from a different age, mm -hmm. coming from a different background than even we came from, even though she was raised by her. Yeah. And it just, it was so impactful that 
it kind of reignited for me my love of reading and Sarita discovered her. Yeah, I wasn't a reader growing up. Um, I'm very, I'm dyslexic. So it was something that I never did because, you know, I got nervous to do it in front of people and I just, it, it, it would bring anxiety for me. So I just didn't do it. Um, so by having that kind of, it just even made me feel like, dang, I've been missing out. Like mm -hmm. I didn't know the true joy that a book could bring. So that book club, it brought out so much in all of us. Like it mm -hmm. was, it was amazing. Uh, uh, Nikki mentioned she was setting everything up. Your daughter, that is. Mm -hmm. They have no idea, like, what, what you mean by setting up? Because y'all had an actual, like, drinks. There's, like, food. There's, like, snacks. Yeah. There's a whole setup for so this book club. So it started off there. very simple. The person who hosts only had to bring uh, some a snack and a drink. And that's it. And then you had and to have notes. Yes, had to notes. have notes. Um, so Sarita hosted first. And anyone who knows my sister knows she can't do anything in small measure. So she had a feast. And I was like, oh, prior to that, I was like, oh, I'll go next, you know? I'm like, I'm not going to follow this and not bring my A game. So after that, it kind of became uh, not a who can do better, but it brought out a different creativity because maybe something, yes, you know, iron sharpens iron. Mm -hmm. And so maybe something we read that week inspired the theme of your host. Or, you know, for me, I found a new recipe that I wanted to cook. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of L evolved and evolved and evolved. We started doing crafts mm -hmm. and like it just, it took on a life of its own. And then outside of that, we were reading other books that weren't appropriate for a 14 year old to read. <laughs> and so we kind of created our own little separate book club. Mm -hmm. And from there, it was like telling people, oh, you know, you should read this. Oh, you should read this. But we don't know any people that read like right. in our personal life. <laughs> and it's crazy. It's crazy because we have really intelligent friends. Yes. And they were like, black people read. And I'm like, what? What? Like just surprised. And they're like, it's not just for work. And we're like, what? But at, at but at the end of the day, like we only started it for her. Yes. So and it it just kind of grew. And she was hosting. I mean, my baby was giving us hot Cheetos, y'all. It yes. wasn't that it had to be anything crazy. It was just the fact that she went to the store. Yes. She did it on her own. Mm -hmm. She came with notes. And um, everybody at the end, we, we always opened with prayer so that you felt comfortable with whatever you were saying and that you knew that it was a safe place. And we would end with a precept. Um, so then she even had to take it a step further and learn precepts and she had to find actual meaning in what she was reading mm -hmm. so it just and if you know her i mean i don't even know how i could have birthed her that girl is so intelligent and she's so into what's happening in the world so she dove in head first mm -hmm. and it helped us become sift and read i think the question about how you you ladies started is so important to ask because i want the audience to know like it's such a wonderful family story. I love y'all family. Just, just hearing about your kids and even your father and the whole family. Just hearing about how it all goes. It's just an amazing story I want the audience to hear because like y'all said a little while ago, most of us in this in this room are readers, but in your everyday actual life, you probably don't have that many readers. Right. Besides these social media platforms is your major reading audience. So that's cool y'all had that at the house, man. That's That's impressive. Yeah, that's that's um that's Thank dope, you. man. I, I I that's dope. So books, you know, became uh an important piece or important fixture in y'all household. <laughs> and that's 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 dope, man. I think um that ideal is interesting. I think that's something that should be implemented um in every black household. I'm I'm just gonna be honest because. You said something a while ago. You said you have intelligent friends and they said they made the statement of do black people, you know, do black mm -hmm. people read? And, you know, it's, it's, it's not funny because I talk to people and people are not interested in reading is not cool. Picking up a <laughs> book is not cool. Buying a book is not cool in our community. Right. And, 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 at one point, reading and 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 purchase, well, and just reading in general was very very important. Yes, uh, uh, um, very very important in our communities. It was yes. very important. Yes. 
you know, our ancestors believed through literature and education, it would evolve up. It would put us in a better situation than we in. So they believed in education through literature, right? So I think we need to adopt that same ideal where we make it fun. And that's the thing too mm -hmm. that I like what y'all did. Y'all made it yeah, fun. Man. Creative. Y'all yeah. y'all made it creative and y'all made it fun. So y'all figured out a way on how to reach your daughter and everybody else cuz I'm quite sure there was other young people in the settings as well as uh uh, uh as adults and y'all made it interesting where everybody, you know, was having fun. It's okay, I'm 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 having fun. I'm engaged with my family. You know what I'm saying? I'm fellowshipping with my family. We're learning with my family in this setting and I'm learning outside of the setting because there's certain things that we got to come back and do and we got to read. So I just think that, man, that um that was dope. Um, Go ahead, Sean. I want, I want to add on to that what you just said about what somebody said, like, man, black folks read. So I'm sitting at work three days ago. I have a newspaper at my workstation and a co-worker walked by, a sister, and she was like, bro, you sitting there reading the paper? Like, who in the world even does that? And she really was mind blown. It kind of was throwing a jab at me because I'm sitting there like reading the paper, you know what I'm saying? Like, we got to get off of that, bro. We really, really got to get off. You know what I mean? Y'all know who this person is right here? Um, uh, Sarita Nick. Oh, Total Asia. Hi! Hi! How are you? <laughs> Thank, you Thank you for joining. Yes. Baby girl kind of start was the kickstart to sit there and read. Mm -hmm. okay. A lot of people don't know that. Um, our physical book club is called Babes in Books. So it was just something cute that we tried to like, again, just make it like you were saying interesting, but we made it about business. Like when we mm -hmm. sat down, like I didn't play if she didn't have her chapters read. I would be like, well, now you're setting us all back. Or if I didn't, it would be like, but mom, I did mine. So yeah. it held us, it taught like accountability. It taught responsibility. It taught that when you have a team or a group, you have to do your part. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't just reading a book. It was also her being able to have camaraderie and be able to talk to her mother about serious situations that she probably wouldn't have felt comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And even vice versa with Nikki. Yes. And in that time, it was originally supposed to only be an hour. Obviously, the time grew the deeper the discussion. But in that time, your phone was put away. It was undivided eye contact communication. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people, I feel like, don't grasp the seriousness that can happen in a book. Mm -hmm. mm. Like, rather, it's Whether fiction it's or nonfiction, or not. romance, anything. Like, anything can be tied back to real life. Anything mm -hmm. can spark a conversation. Um, the second book we read, or I'm sorry, the third book we read was Piecing Me Together. And in that book, there's a rapist going around. Mm -hmm. And all over the news, they're telling girls, make sure you're wearing a lot of clothes. Make sure you're going out in numbers, doing all these things to make sure you but don't get raped. But girls. Talk, talking to Black girls to do all these things to protect yourself. And the main character in the story is like a 16-year-old girl. And she said, it's crazy all the times that we watch the news and they tell us girls what we should do not to be victims. They never say men and boys don't rape. Mm -hmm. Don't attack girls. Don't stop or stop when they say no. Mm -hmm. And it was such a powerful conversation to be had at the table with a 14 year old girl. Mm -hmm. And us as women like, huh, growing up, we did hear like, don't be in that man's face. Don't be do these things. Things that were just a part of our upbringing, but nobody said that man shouldn't be looking at you that way. Yes. So it even helped me. I have two sons and I thought like, huh, I never told them that they shouldn't rape. I mean, I told them no means no, but what does that mean? It mm -hmm. made me break it down to my sons. Like you, you need to be careful. Don't be touching her. You know, when she says no, or it doesn't matter what she's having one, that's still a woman. Give her respect. It, it, it really changed the conversation because mm -hmm. no means no could mean no to chips. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't know that. So it really helped us in that way. Like there is so much awesomeness that can be found in even just fiction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it and, really and that's, why, that's why we wanted y'all here talking about fiction because a lot of our guests, a lot of our podcasts are about non-fiction and other kind of topics, but mm -hmm. you can learn and gain so much in the fictional realm. And I want to display that with, with you ladies today. Thank you. I, I I got a question though about you know that that last book y'all read. Did that 
book kind of like break the ice where y'all could talk about those types of situations? Because, I mean, you're talking about sex and so forth, because, you know, in our community, most times in the household, you know, um, we don't really we don't really talk about sex or we don't talk about sex to our daughters in particular in depth. And we don't talk about the rape aspect. We'll talk about sex to our sons. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Don't go out and have a baby. If you go out and have a baby, you need to protect yourself. What's inside of a condom? Let me show you how to, we'll even show them how to actually put a condom on mm -hmm. with a piece of fruit, right? But we won't go into in depth. Okay, if you get in this situation, if you in the situation and she says no and she doesn't feel comfortable, you shouldn't force yourself on it. And if you force yourself on it, this is rape. And this could be this, that, and the third. You can end up in jail. We can end up, you know, this, or you can end up getting hurt or whatever the case was. So was that kind of like the, that book was like the, 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 the barrier that, that you know, the, the break where y'all was able to talk about, you know, talk about sex and that, and, and, and that subject through that book. Um, so I had my kids young, so I, um, I got to grow up with them. Um, so I was very open in sexual conversations. Um, so I felt like I didn't need the book to get there, but once the book came, it helped me approach it from a more intelligent way versus being a teen mom. Mm -hmm. It helped me coming to her as like, I understand. Um, I was able to use words like it's your choice. Um, you know, think about it first. I was able to say like, um, we, it made us have a conversation about wanting to have a boyfriend. And she was like, well, what age? And that book helped me to tell her that it wasn't an age level. It was a maturity level. Um, had I not read that book, maybe I would have been like, girl, when you're 18 or when you're 16, like the book really helped me to understand and have the conversation with her. Like, if you're not mature enough to tell this boy, you don't want this, then you're not ready to be his girlfriend. But I, I needed those words to see yeah. it for myself, to be able to say that with her. You know what's good about books too, the power of books, like especially the fiction, you can discuss something and like the focus doesn't feel like an attack on you personally. Right. Uh -huh. We're talking about Samantha in the book. It's not about you. Samantha in the book, hypothetically, you can go through all these scenarios and there's no need to feel like, oh, you attacking me. You coming at me. Uh, what you talking about? There's no need for that. We can all have a conversation and learn and grow about the overall topic, not about mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yes, sir. All right. So uh, there is many sub genres of romance novels, including fantasy, gothic, a commentary, historical romance, which sub genre do you uh both read or it's all of these sub uh, sub genres um so it's actually kind of funny so as we stated we kind of got into the reading game late so for a long time we did not know black romance existed and it's crazy like people will talk about sister soldier Eric Jerome Dickey you know these tried and true and i'm like Dang. they you know that we're now discovering but we didn't read them when we were kids in 18s and 19s so black romance is kind of our lane and it falls into so many categories there's contemporary there's dark romance there's mm -hmm. fantasy there's paranormal there's mm -hmm. we read it all um for us our kind of our standard our thing is as long as there's a black female lead we will read it um, I'm a, a I am a historical oh, she loves romance historical. junkie. I know it's probably random because of the way I talk, and you probably wouldn't think that, but I love it. I love the different men from different times. It's really one of my favorite genres. So, given the chance, I'm going to go for a historical romance or an urban. I like it. <laughs> I, it's random, but those would be my favorites. I do love fantasy as well. So, Nikki so likes I, it dark. She okay. likes dark romance. <laughs> So how do y'all so how do y'all um choose the the um you know when y'all get ready to come on y'all platform and y'all want y'all getting ready to review and talk about this book y'all she like dark romance you like historical romance so how do that process work where y'all make a decision three is a control freak and she picks I'm not a control freak give me a timeout coach give me a timeout okay. <laughs> Nikki. Explain to the audience what does dark romance mean. We're not going to pretend like we all know this stuff. Give okay. us a class. Okay. On what so that dark means. romance can fall under many categories. 
but it tends to be things that are kind of like taboo. Um, moth if and there's levels to it. There's levels to everything. There's like mafia romance can be considered a dark romance because they're normally killers. Um, kidnapping, forced proximity, thing if you're into more kinkier things, it has a lot of different levels, but it could be something as simple as mistaken identity and now you're forced to be with this person, that's dark because now you're forced to be in proximity of each other. And you could get kidnapped. Tell them about that. Yes, you could get, I, some of my, <laughs> some, some of my favorite are a kidnapping so, story. Dark romance tends to be like your more forbidden fantasies. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not something you want to necessarily experience in real life, but it's fun in fiction to have that tantalize your senses and imagine the darker tabooness of it all. That That's kind of the draw to it. And I'm only teasing it out because I want the audience to realize something. If you say I'm going to Walmart to the romance section, or I'm going to Barnes and Nobles, like that's a large umbrella. But it's most so of us, if you're not educated in these genres, you're thinking like one thing, but it's a big old huge division of its own. You know what I'm saying? I, I want to kind of just show that. That's why I'm that's why I'm doing that like that. We're still finding new genres and subgenres each day because we're still fairly new to the community. Um, so, so we don't even know all the things that we like. It, it's constantly unfolding for us. Mm -hmm. So, but for the, for the sake of Sip and Read, when we're on the books that we discuss on camera, um, the book of the month, the book of the month, um, we break down different sections of the book. Um, I choose them. Um, I only go off cover. I never read a synopsis so we can get trapped into a lot of different things. Um, I really always like for the book to have an audio. I explained that I am dyslexic. So I can read, obviously, but it just takes me longer. So I'd rather do an audio so that I don't have to keep going back and, you know, go back and see what it is and that and, you know. But the, we have done on our show where we've done books that I had to physically read, but it does, it's a longer process. Okay. okay. We're going we gonna to talk a little bit more about the audio books a little bit later and the importance of audio, audio books later on. Um, so uh, it's on you, Sean. Question number three. It's on you, Sean. Question number three. Oh, he said, wait. Oh, I think he said keep going. He's doing something. Okay, okay. Well, question number three. Uh, tell us about the breakdown of the different segments you have to roll out and your different forms of content. Y'all, cause y'all have, uh, y'all put out quite a bit of content and y'all put out quite a bit of content ooh, ooh, on various hey, platforms. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. I got it, I got <laughs> it. Right here. Okay. You late, okay. but you late, you late, you late. <laughs> my, audio, my, my audio got jacked up, I couldn't, something happened. Okay, okay, go ahead. <laughs> so go ahead Me and too. answer hey. Kofi's question and then we'll get to Sean's question. So I'm gonna answer Kofi oh, real fast. That was his oh, question. Was I was just answering his question. question. Just go ahead. Uh, just, it's just real fast. Um, so I am our creative director. <clears throat> um, and what we, what we do is we're just constantly trying to find new and fun ways to do things. But we do have our staples. Um, we have a SIP report, which we put out every Sunday. And it's just kind of giving some, some book of what we think people might want to read. We try to tell just enough without too much. Sarita's really good at that. Thank you. I'm still trying to find my groove with it, but Sarita's very good at giving you enough of the story to make you want to read it without telling you the story. Um, thank you. We also do an up late, um, and that's basically where we bring on an author, and it's kind of like a, a more sleepover vibe. We're wearing pajamas. We have drinks. Sometimes yeah. there's snacks, and you just kind of really chit-chat chit and enjoy each other. Um, we them. also do regular, thank you. We do regular interviews on um, YouTube as well with authors. And that's more of an intimate setting. So it's kind of like where me and Nikki can just really get to get to the meat of the things. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times when you are on live, you got to make sure you're reading it right and everybody's saying things. So that's another thing. But Nikki can explain our actual um, so book of the month. The book of the month is the book that we discuss the whole month. Um, we do the SIP selection. That's where we announce the book. And that's um, something we started this year. And originally, we would just post the picture of the book and then jump into the discussion. 
Now we also do sit musings where we discuss the main female and male characters um, in separate videos, the people that surround them, their, you know, we try to really break down the characters, get into their psyches, their backgrounds, just those kind of things. And then the next couple videos are just discussing the chapters that we read. That's amazing, bro. They just said about eight, nine different things they're doing on a regular basis. That's just a lot of output for anybody doing this creative thing. You know, it's not easy to do. We, we do a once a month show with this modern day griot. And it, it's it's enough. Y'all juggling mm -hmm. so many things and it's it's so creative, but y'all got to go and follow the YouTube, follow the TikTok. The, the, the camera work, I'm going to say this, the camera work is just increasing. They got Thank intros, you. We are they got really music. Trying. <laughs> We got the Thank background is this 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 watching them over years, watching their trajectory is just a wonderful thing to watch, man. For real, they got Thank skill. You. Thank you. Thank you. So, how was y'all experience? Because you know, you know y'all do various things uh, where y'all put out content. Like he mentioned Facebook, he mentioned Instagram, um, TikTok, and you mentioned YouTube. Y'all, how was your experience? Um, y'all just recently did y'all first interview on TikTok. So, how was that experience? And is it different than uh, the Instagram? TikTok is way different than Instagram. <laughs> um, it was fun, but I kind of like the the vibe of TikTok, the way it looks, how people can send flowers and comments. Like it's a little more interactive, but we still don't know how to work it on the actual starting the live side. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I definitely want to do more of them just to get more comfortable with it. I felt really out of my element um doing it but it was fun and we did as it with a, an author a, that we're very comfortable with so that also made it easier as a consumer watching it it was a very good situation y'all should do more i encourage it it was hot it was thank hot. you thank you yeah so what about the youtube side of the thing do you prefer the youtube side than the instagram side because i i me personally i prefer the YouTube side when it comes to putting out uh, content when you interviewing, um, you know, when you interviewing, I, I think that that's a, a better look. But how what do you feel about the Instagram and uh, the YouTube? You like the Instagram lives better or you like the, the uh, YouTube lives better, which I think y'all do the uploading. Y'all do the uploading on YouTube. Y'all don't actually do <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Yes. We're trying to learn to do this situation that y'all got here. This is real nice. We we ain't there yet, but we try to learn that. <laughs> we we are really starting from like it started like we literally started from the bottom. Mm -hmm. Like we didn't really know how to do cameras. We didn't really know about the lighting. Um, my daughter again, she's young, so she's always like teaching us different things or you know editing different stuff for us. YouTube is where we're really we want to be there, but mm -hmm. it's hard because of all the editing. We both have jobs. Um, again, I have kids. They're damn near like Nikki's kids because she's always helping me with them. Um, you know, I still my parents don't drive, so I'm always driving them around and. Nikki's always helping my parents. So this SIP kind of takes secondary to us. So we're mm -hmm. really struggling with learning how to do all the things. We would love to be super um, present on YouTube, mm -hmm. but with all the editing and all of that stuff, it's so hard for us. We're still trying to find mm -hmm. our flow, definitely. But I do like the intimate setting of doing a YouTube live. Don't be wrong. Um, any live where people can interact and you can get, get like it hypes you up, it sets the tone, it's yeah. really fun. Yes. But there is also, I feel like it's easier to connect and bond with the author when it's like a one on one conversation. Mm -hmm. But it's to, to your point, I'm sorry, we talked all over it. Um, Instagram is where we started. So I think we just feel more comfortable yes. um, with doing Instagram things. Okay. Um, Al, Al, is that Ali? Ali, I can't pronounce your name, but can you be more specific? Does this size matter? Also, I'm going to do something different this episode. I'm going to give out my business number um, on this episode. So if you have any questions um, where you want to call and ask us or ask our guests, um, okay. here's the number. The number is 601-695-59. Okay. I mean, 5797. Again, that's 601 <laughs> Six nine five five seven nine seven. I'll also put it in the chat um as well. So 
Feel free if you want to call in and ask a question, ask our uh, beautiful sisters a question. Um, feel free. I got a um, disclaimer. I got a disclaimer. This is a, a, a respectable show. No crazy questions, man. Oh, they gonna get hung up quick. I mean, when you, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you discuss romance and things like that, we're trying to be mature as adults on this platform. We all have families and whatnot. Clearly, we love what we love. No crazy conversations and no crazy comments, but be respectful to the ladies, respect the audience and everything, and keep it moving. Yeah, it, 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 I'm going to hang up on them quick, but I mean, this is a safe space over here, so oh, my yeah, audience ain't, ain't really that ridiculous, it. right? We ain't having it. Uh -huh. so, no, I was just... mm -hmm. so let's, uh, the romance, uh, the romance, uh, romance or writers of America cited 16% of men read romance novels. Do you both know quite a few men that read romance novels? No. I don't really, um, no, I mean, I don't know as any, honestly, outside of the people that, yeah, like, I feel like Sean is the only one that I personally know. Mm -hmm. Um, our following is mostly women. Um, I do have, um, a client, um, he is into romance, but it's MM. That is male on male romance. Yeah, see, see, oh, okay. they got their own terminology. They got their own encyclopedia. <laughs> I always ask Nikki, "Well, what's this? Okay. Well, what's this, Nikki?" So Nikki knows all the acronyms and alphabets and all that. Okay, okay. But um, I don't know any men, any straight men that read um, romance. So, yes. so this is, my, my, my piggyback question for, for, for the ladies. So I discussed this same thing with the uh, the Black Reader Appreciation Week panel mm -hmm. because probably 90% of that content over there is romance and urban fiction or whatever. So the same stat Kofi said, 16% of guys are reading romance, man. That's So what do you think writers could do to attract more guys to come into the, into the fold? What, what, what could they do in your opinion? Well, I feel like it's not even really what can you do. It's finding what works for you. Like, as we said, there's so many vast things for romance, right? Every romance genre isn't for every person. So there's, like, suspenseful romance. There's um, there's thriller romance. romance. There's, they got, they know, got, they got, they got all, paranormal. Romance. Yeah, paranormal, yeah. There's, par yeah. you know, so it's about finding what works for you. Like, I feel like certain authors are for anyone. It doesn't matter what your gender is, what's your, you know, anything. They're just good writers, right? They just write a subject matter that anyone can relate to. That was something that was so amazing for us with discovering Black romance was finding books that we could relate to. Because I don't like anything soft. Nikki is okay with that, like, cutesy, you know, stuff. I don't really like that. So, um, if, if a man only believes there's only that cutesy, cartoony love, then they're not going to be interested. But if, if they even took one, if any man, I don't care, any man picked up a Joan Vassar book, the book Black, um, it's a historical uh, fiction series. If any man put that book up, you're going to fall in love with that type of romance. It's, okay, it's so phenomenal. So, oh, time out, time out, coach, time out. So explain to the audience, what does historical fiction mean? So historical romance, um, like it's a, it's more or less just like men from a different time, women from a different time. It's a time period. Um, it could be, you know, it, it's basically like back in the day, if you will. So sometimes they're slaves. Oh. Sometimes, I'm sorry, I was reading the comments. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sometimes they're slaves. Sometimes they're freed. For me, I, I prefer black romance. There's a year I don't usually like to go back to because then your girl be acting real ugly with everybody and it's not called for. So, um, but I feel like if you picked up that book by Zone, Joan Vassar, any man would be like, is this what they really talking about? And it is eye opening. I feel like it could even help men and women's relationships. Like I feel men like any being book men by Joan Vassar, anyone can pick up and be enthralled. It's her writing is so sophisticated and just it's on a whole other playing field. You um, almost don't realize it's romance. It's more like right. a history lesson. Right. Yes. No. I'm going to say this, right? You mentioned, like, quote-unquote soft romance. I think people stereotypically thinking about, like, the 1980s, 1970s, soap like operas Fabio. or whatever. Like, no. Back to, back to Eric Jerome Dickey, who I highlighted. If you read some of his series, like, it's actual, like, gangsters and mobsters and his big old <laughs> fight scenes and his, his gun shootouts. Like, this is some crazy stuff. But, of course, we all adults. People get People meet each other. They fall in love. 
they make love, whatever happens, but it's not like some flowery mm-hmm. stereotypical stuff. Still exciting. It's still got an edge to it. It's still, you know. I I think um people your your pla- y'all platform is important, and I think it need to be more platforms like y'all platforms. And what I mean by that is 16%. It says 16% of men read romance novels, right? So if people, if if there are platforms that break break it down the way that y'all break it down, y'all do an excellent job. Yes. An excellent job. Yes. Of oh, breaking down these things to make it sound fun and to make it sound interesting, where you want to pick the book up and read. And through those novels, there are things that you can, you know, you can learn within mm-hmm. reading those novels that can apply inside of your household. You know, you know, far as how and how you treating, you know, how you treating your kids, how you treating your mm-hmm. your, your 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 love interests or. Your, your 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 wife or your significant significant others, right? So we have to look at it like that because there are things that you can actually learn when you're reading these novels. So I think if it was more platforms that did book reviews on that and break it down concisely the way that y'all break it down and how in-depth y'all go into different things and how y'all say, okay, this mean this and this mean that or he did that. Well, you know, so... If there were more platforms like that, that that can speak about these different books, and 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 break it down the way y'all break it down, and then tie it into something where they're actually learning something that they can actually take from and apply, and be a practitioner mm-hmm. of some of these things in these novels, you know what I'm saying? I think more men will pick these books up and read because I'm one of those men, right? That mm-hmm. I just started reading novels. I I got I got a um, a, a, a big library. I have novel books that I have bought in the past. Have I read them? Hell no. Mm-hmm. I just started reading novels. I'll be honest. I just started reading novels about three months ago. I'll be honest. I just started reading. I don't read mm-hmm. Greek novels. Yeah. And and one in particular, um, the woman that I'm going to highlight that wrote, I'm telling you, um, I can't, I can't stop reading the book. I hate when I was mm-hmm. out of town yesterday, I took the book with me but I took and put it and accidentally put it in the car when I packed up some of our stuff last night when we was in the hotel and mm-hmm. I got ready to sit down and relax and read, you know, and unwind before I go to sleep. And I hated that I left the book down, mm-hmm. you know, to read the book. So, I know you know, what yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm definitely getting into the novels, but I have, I have Sean and I have mm-hmm. y'all platform to thank for that. You know, Sean talks about it because we talk a lot. So he gives me some of, uh, 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 some of his favorite uh, authors who wrote novels, and then um, me looking at you know me looking at y'all um, and when y'all go live and looking at certain things you know uh, recently, and then me doubling back before this interview. So the past two weeks I've been just sipped and read. I'm sipped and read out like I told y'all the other day, just me going back and looking at you know all of your that videos, is, that is. right? So you know that I'm impressed. Yes. by the things that y'all do and i'm impressed by how concise y'all break things down i'm impressed how y'all make it fun how i'm impressed how y'all make it relatable i'm impressed how y'all make it interesting where i want to go and pick these books up like i know and I, i'm gonna tell y'all something that i think y'all need to get better at that's looking in the chat you know okay. because oh, yes. you know because I, I sometimes when y'all live, I try to catch and I might come in on something when y'all talking about, I be trying to get these books, you know, and I, and I be trying to go directly okay. to the author, just like y'all had Nori on. So mm-hmm. I watched that and, you know, so My I watched dog, that, Nori. So I watched that com- completely. I, while y'all was live, I watched it. I come in and- The best show the ever. The best one they did. Yeah, so I was trying to, even he didn't look in it. So I was trying to, you know, reach out to him and buy that book y'all was talking. If he had anything else, I want to support and buy that as right. well. But, I, you know, y'all doing an excellent job, man, yes. with that. Thank you. I thank wanna, you. But thank you for letting thing, us right? know that. Um, we will definitely be paying attention, if, even if it's having another phone or however. Mm-hmm. So thank you for wanna, that, because we didn't something, know. Something about y'all platform, right? Because, of course, you go into that romance genre once again. 
it's a thousand channels out there. Of course, people want to talk about the nasty stuff and get raunchy mm-hmm. and get ratchet. And that's cool. It's all important. But the way y'all do is so like smart to me. Y'all so intelligent with it. Why y'all having fun cutting up? That's what really, really attracted me to y'all page. That's why I started coming around in the beginning. Like, man, this is the way y'all was doing it. It just really, really caught my attention. And I hadn't read romance in years prior to coming across y'all page a couple years ago. I was like, I got I to get back in here and find out what they're talking about, man. And my man just asked the question, right? He said, why should a man read romance novels when he's not romancing what the question said, right? I want to say something about that 16% thing Kofi said. So it said that 16% of fellas are reading romance books, right? But you got a high 85, 90% of people out there clearly having babies. Mm-hmm. So clearly all these guys are meeting women with no background, no GPS system on how to go about this thing. But you just find a female, shooting your shot, you just making a baby and just... Is that what's going on out there? So clearly. I feel- So I think what for me, one of my favorite things about romance stories is how the characters connect and how the male character learns the female character and vice versa. So like in books, you get grand dressers, right? Like they're going to fly you to Paris so that you can try these crepes that they really love. But the things that speak to me more are when they do small things. Like you wake up to some roses or they send you this coffee because they know you like it. It's the getting to know your person. And I think the anything with romance, no matter who you are, man, woman, you're going to read what you're attracted to. So it's kind of like, what are you trying to get out this book? Are you trying to get just some hot kink? Are you trying to get some murder and mystery like what is it that is drawing you to a story like for me example i'm a mood reader so there are certain books that i might love today and not touch tomorrow because my mood has changed so that's i love the vastness of romance because i could always find something to tickle my fancy and i feel like if more people stepped out of their comfort zone they could find something that speaks to them too like i feel like alexandria house is hilarious you want something funny you can pick up her book, Man or Woman, and laugh. Um, Aubrey Penn, I feel like, is a great web weaver. She can twist up a story like nobody's business. Do you want some twisting and turns? Do you want a little hoodness? Like, what are you looking for? A, um, AC author <clears throat> writes great suspense thrillers, romance suspense. Like, who have you on the edge of your seat, clutching your heart, thinking you're about to die with this character? What is it that you are drawn to? Because there might, there's going to be romance in it. It's just about finding what tickles your fancy. And I think it's important because we could all use a little love. I think for a man that's not trying to romance, right? Just just in the fact of, no, if, if, if most, the romantic genre is the most bought. Mm-hmm. More women are spending money on romance, right? Yeah. So if you're really trying to really know a woman, you can pick up a book and see what's, you know, like what, what's really going on. Let's just see what it is. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And at the end of the day, books are nothing but words, which means that 90% of these women's love languages are words of affirmation. So if you're paying attention to that, then that's like, okay, so they really want to know how I think they look today. They really want you to communicate what you're thinking. Yes. Like they, they really want to know how my day was. Mm-hmm. So if, if you really think about it, it's just words. Or even like most romance books are written by women, right? So a character, the male character might say something and you're literally watching the female character blow it up in her head. Like women really think like that. A simple gesture that was nothing to you that you just did in passing. They're like building a whole time frame of events that never occurred, but it happened in their head and now they're acting on it. Like if you want to find something, you're gonna find it. <laughs> oh so, yeah. So what so okay. So men and you know, so the men, do you think that we're not interested in picking up and reading these romance novels about love and i'm speaking about our community in general when i'm talking Mm -hmm. about young men right there are there are little examples of love in the household 
is that is that would that probably be a reason why because we don't know what love look like a lot of times you know in our community the mother is raising the child by herself mm -hmm. the mother has men coming in and out of the house the mother is in abusive relationships so the man the young man is looking at how uh this man is treating her mother uh this young man is looking at how men is coming in and out of uh his household mother can't keep a relationship uh um do you think that may be a reason um why a lot of men don't read those type of book because we don't see it in the household i mean it could very well be something like that as well right um it, we've all been there where even if it's a friend if it's not you like my parents are together um and they're not married mm -hmm. like and it wasn't easy like my mom is a total gemini like when i tell you she can have one extreme to the next and my dad is a pisces so laid back and cool all the time when you meet them you're like how are they even together they don't make no sense right mm -hmm. but my dad loves her so he is we have all grew up watching love my mm -hmm. kids have seen love like even when my mom could go she could be on 20 right but my dad knows how to talk to her He'll be like, all right, Deb, go ahead, go ahead. He lets her have it. So then when he's done, when she's done tripping out, they have a conversation. So it does on what you've seen mm -hmm. in your house, you know? So me, I immediately pop off, right? So um, <laughs> I grew up thinking that a man gonna let me talk to him like that. That's not the case. Every man is not like that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times I feel like the toxicity that our kids grow up seeing, it shapes so much. Like. Mm -hmm they thinking that you only can pick up a book if there's a gun on the cover if you see hearts on there you're like oh no that's too soft that ain't even real life mm -hmm. that's I'm because we haven't you. shown them that um yes. i'm super affectionate with my kids like super affectionate with them and i've even had a boyfriend feel like well ain't that weird that you be hugging your son nigga what what yes yes and at that point i was like i can't fuck with you no more you're an idiot like no one hugged you so my sons are they know it's okay to hug they know it's yeah. okay to use soft yeah. words they know yeah. because they, they've gotten that yes. my father yeah. speaks yeah. that way even yeah. sometimes i might be going off on my son and my dad will be like sorry that's a man and then i have to come and be like okay dad you're right you know what i'm saying a lot of times our men don't see that right they don't no. know that softness no. like my daughter for instance my son's buy her flowers for Valentine's Day. I buy her jewelry. I don't want her to ever feel like that if a man doesn't do it, then she's not important, right? So in her mind, the sun rises and sets on her because every day, for as long as she can remember, I'm telling her, you know, good morning, you gorgeous, smart girl. Good morning, you beautiful girl. It's not always just you're pretty. I always want her to know that she's smart, that she's intelligent, that she's picked first, always. Mm -hmm. My sons know that they are the prize. A lot of girls be thinking that they could talk to boys. and Not mine, not mine. No, they already know they're the prize. They know yes. who they are and what they are. So I do feel like when you see these books, you're like, oh, no, that's going to be too soft. They don't even make no sense. That shit's right. unbelievable. Yeah, I do feel yeah. like and that's not, true. it's not relatable. But just from the the things you said, Kofi, six different books popped up in my head. And I think that it's just not giving it the chance. Because there's certain, like, there's she'll read a book based off the cover. Go ahead. Let me, let, let me tell you why, right? So whenever I interviewed the Black male writers for Black Reader Appreciation Week a couple of days ago, um, and they're all romance writers, romance mm -hmm. urban fiction writers. And we're discussing why in the black guy community is not more talked about, right? You know why? Because the ego and pride, if I'm in a barbershop chilling with a book or at work with a book, it's more cool to have the 48 laws of power or destruction of a black civilization or these other books versus me sitting there with a book and it got a female on the cover and her back might be, or whatever it might look like on the cover. It's not as cool to pass that around. And man, check this out. And man, look at that. That's not as prevalent. In our world, as it probably should be. Right. So, me, in the military, a grown man gave me a book like that. So that, that's how I got lucky to start even reading to begin with. In the military, a brother said, "Man, read this," and it was a fictional book like that, urban romance kind of book. He couldn't have gave me that book. Man reading a book. Oh, it's over. I'm immediately about to be like, oh, hello. 
I'm well, look, Sarita. I like long walks. I, do, <laughs> I, I, I do imagine this. a man reading a book to you. I did a, I did a live that. last year, right? I did a live last year. I asked mm-hmm. all of my national wide audience, when's the last time you just walked somewhere and saw a man sitting there reading a book? Anywhere. A newspaper, a magazine, a book, just sitting down, even an old man with a paper, nobody ever even sees it. Mm-hmm. They're not even seeing it. So whenever I'm sitting there reading, I'm the freaking like an alien. Like, it's not a, a good, a good uh, congratulations. It's more like, a, what the hell wrong with you? Mm-hmm. Yep. It's some day clone time stuff. It's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's exactly. Exactly. It, exactly. I don't care though. I mean, I do it all the time. And then I'll talk about the books I buy. They be, boy, you crazy. You done been and bought these books, man. You know, I'd rather spend my money to invest in my mind than spend my money mm-hmm. on something that's ain't going to last, you know, last but a few months. So, you know, so, but yeah, it's, 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 it's rare, but we're trying to make it cool. interesting and cool to read because mm-hmm. when I look at intellectuals, right. And, and, and that's the problem. It, it has to start in the household. We can't depend on the school system or the food nope. system, what I call it. And the reason why I'm saying that is because the picture is painted that people of color didn't do anything for society right so it makes them have a low self uh esteem so they don't feel like they're smart enough the people that made mon- major contributions worldwide or in even in this just in this country did not look like them but that's far from the truth right so we have to be take it amongst ourselves to teach them so when i look at a scientist most people when i say scientists to people a white European man or a white European woman pop up with a white coat on. But mm-hmm. when I, but what pops up in my head is a black African man or woman with tribal marks, scarification marks on her face or on his, on his, on his arm. Right. And in, in different types of animal clothing. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, That's what I look at because when you go back and you look at, and you see that these people that we learn about, like Pythagoras and Euclid and Thales and Einstein and Hippocrates, Hippoc- all these individuals, these Greek people that they teach about, they don't tell you where did they learn from. Mm-hmm. A lot of these people went into the interior of Africa in a place right. called the, uh, uh, the great, the supposed to be great library of Alexander, right? So this is in East Africa, right? This is, we were talking about it, what y'all call Egypt, but what the people may refer to as Kemet. That was a place of high science, right? Even when you go into West Africa and certain places like Timbuktu and other places, those places were the Songhai Empire. Those, those places where people were had high science, those people who studied so many particular things and, 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 um, answer so many different types of equations and learn, you know, just learn all these great things, but we don't know those types of things, right? So we devalue ourselves. So it, it, I, I'm just saying it, it's, it's, we have to take the onus of teaching that yeah. to our kids instead of trying to get it from the school system or what I like to refer to as the food system. And just like we did with the modern degree, our book, COVID just gave y'all a wonderful history class. I love it. I can't wait to play it back. But to bring it to modern times, that's why I take guys like us. I post on my stories. I'm reading Eric Jerome Dickey. I'm reading Zane. I'm reading Terry McMillan. Uh, a guy like Norian. Y'all had Norian on y'all show. Norian is an amazing guy. Mm-hmm. When I say that, I mean like a real brother, a real guy. Writes amazing urban romance and things of that nature, even though he's a, a guy. You know, guys like Achille and, and Reggie, these kind of guys, they're regular, everyday, at the barbershop guys. They read and write amazing fictional, sometimes mm-hmm. romance books. It's not yeah. it's not unmanly, is my point. You know what I'm saying? No, that's but that true. kind of masculinity comes from like just so much oppressedness, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Because a man, I just I can't imagine like a woman walking by seeing a man read a book or a, a newspaper, anything like any woman that wants substance or wants real life longevity. I can't imagine her being like, is this fool reading that book? Oh my God. That's so weird. Like to me, like that bitch is dumb. Don't fucking talk to her. Because they do it. 
They you know, do it. She is an idiot. Do not talk to her. Don't let her raise your children. Do not let her around your cats. You can't trust a bitch that don't want a man to have a book. How can you leave me if you don't know anything? I, I, I don't. I, I can't understand. But look how crazy the full circle is, right? Like Hope said a little while ago, if that young lady didn't have a daddy in the house, first of all, and the one that she did have around, she never saw it happening. You don't think it's a positive attribute. You don't see it as a, deem, a, a redeeming quality. You have no association to it. You didn't see your grandfather do it. Your uncle wasn't doing it. Your brothers mm -hmm. didn't do it. So you, you have no real way of seeing that as a cool, attractive quality, you know? You know, some girls value themselves based off of what they can get. It's truly just what matters to you. Um, in the Black series by Joan Vazar, it's a historical romance. And in it, there's a point where a man is like watching this white woman just leisure. And he's a black man. And he realizes he's never seen black women just leisure. Just never just relax. They're always doing something. They're right? always working. They're working the field. And then when they get off, they're taking care of the kids. Like they never see leisure. And then there's another character, Black, who the series is based off of. He can read. A really intelligent man. And anyone that's around him, it's a, you have to learn to read. It's a requirement. And so though he's teaching this woman to read and she asks him, what does he like to read for entertainment? And he informed her he doesn't read for entertainment. He's already 10 steps behind. He can only read to gain more knowledge to catch up and get ahead. And to me, that was so powerful because, again, when we were growing up, our parents didn't force us to read. Mm -mm. As long as you got so, good grades, you was all right. As, yeah, as long as you brought in them grades and didn't get in trouble in school, you could do what you want when you got home, right? So it's, to me, it was so impactful because that's something that we need to teach ahead. Like just starting the book club with baby girl was so important. Even now my nephew, the youngest one, he ain't about that reading, but we forced him to read every day. You, it's paying it forward. You know what I mean? You have to instill that because I do think that if you just want to be like my guy's the baddest on the block, you're not worried about him reading. But your goals is not elevation. It's almost like in reverse. Back in the day, a man that could read was probably the sexiest thing on the block. You're like, oh my gosh, girl, he's so smart. He can read a book. And now, yeah. it, now you care right, more Billy. about him being Look, right, Billy. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it, it's crazy how things can go backwards. Like instead of us now, mm -hmm. where knowledge mm -hmm. is so mm -hmm. easy to grasp, we're we're like pushing it away. And mm -hmm. I just you know, I can't understand. That's the problem. It. It's too easy. That's the problem. It's too easy. So it's, it's just over oversaturated. So the appreciation not there because it's so easy, right? But I want to say something you, what you just said, Sarita. In the 80s and the 90s, even the dope boys on the block had knowledge. Mm -hmm. And the way they made books back then, I love collecting old books. You can literally fit a book in your pocket, easy, paperback, mm -hmm. easy. Mm -hmm. They're on the block hustling and whatnot, but them boys still reading uh, Walter Mosley. They still reading, like the homeboy said earlier, Iceberg Slim, Donna Goins. They still on the block. Oh, you you, you read that? Man, you read that? It, it was still happening amongst these quote unquote tough guys, right? It was never cool to be an idiot. It was never cool to be. I don't know where that came from the past probably 10 to 15 years, but they glorified being stupid and dumb. Yes. I don't understand. Yes, because high education was the key. You know, everybody go look up the uh, American Negro Academy. That's who I structure my whole business and everything around the American Negro Academy, right? And you will see like a Carter G. Wilson, a W.E. Du Bois, who was also a part uh, uh, um, of this organization, right? And other men that I've had mentioned in the past, right? All these men are my heroes, right? So you will see that coming out of, of the... Uh, African being emancipated here in America, mm -hmm. right? And going all the way up in, in, in the 20th, in the early 20th century, man, it was revered for, for even men and women to be, uh, to, to have high education, to read books. Again, they believed that we would make a way for ourselves through the power of literature. And that was reading books, right? So mm -hmm. it just, over these last couple of, you know, these last maybe I can't even tell you when, but it's 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 just got to a point where dumb is the cool now. You know what I'm saying? That is cool to be dumb. You know, you you it's it's not good, and that goes back to not knowing who you are. 
So that's why it goes back to the owners that we must study and understand who we are and who our ancestors were and the contributions that they made so we can teach our children so they can have a, a template to go by, right? So mm -hmm. and a template to go by where it can boost their self-esteem, right? And hey, my ancestors did this so I can do the same, I can do the same thing. I'm not gonna settle for nothing less than being smart. I'm not gonna settle less but contributing something positive to my community and that is through the power of reading literature and that's that's books i'm not going to dumb myself down for anybody so we have to start pushing literature back on our children and pushing literature back in our communities when y'all talk about the books so that's dope and even organizing and doing that amongst your family and making it fun like y'all talk about Powerful. right Oh, mm -hmm. oh. I think no, no. you have to make your, you got to teach kids to be proud of themselves again, mm -hmm. because yes. a lot of times, yes. um, yes, they're, they're talking about like what this other person is doing and what's this, and none of them people look like them. Like they, there's no pride in yeah. self. Like even That's I'm right. not going to go there cause I'll be yeah. on a damn engine. Even these boy, these black men that are like, I don't like black women cause they're loud cause of this, cause of that. It's like the self hate is so rooted that there's yeah. no pride yeah. in self. So why would you yeah. pick up a book that has the ne word Negro in the title that has that like, you don't in your mind, they don't do nothing. No, right. way. like yeah. th there's no pride and it. It's sad. Like yeah. it's it really sad, sad. especially it sad. around black men. Like it, it's it's the most heartbreaking thing to see that for a black man. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. I just think yeah. a black man is like strength personified. So when but, you see somebody like mm. so it just to me, it, it sounds weak when they're like, yeah. oh, I, I. I just the weird shit, you know. It, but, it, it's it's sad though. There's no pride in self. You know that lack of self pride is not the only answer, but it's a large part of the solution as to all the anxiety going on right now. Anxiety, mm -hmm. depression, suicide rate going crazy. It's clearly you don't value yourself to a high degree. To even be in some of them kind of spaces that you're in, and like Sarita said, you're looking at somebody else in a whole different demographic. And you're, you're wondering and thinking about yourself, you know. I want to add something right quick to what Kofi said, right? A long time ago, here in Louisiana, probably almost nine to ten years ago, it was a song on the radio. And I quote, the song was like, get done with it. Get done with it. Get done with it. I'm retarded. I'm retarded. And it was like, I look, the hook, Kofi. Kofi, the hook. I belong in the mental home. I belong in the mental home. Now, ask me, What's the average Louisiana school, uh, uh, the school rankings every doggone year? 49 or 50. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. We, have, we have successfully made this mantra to where it's actually on our test scores, our standardized tests, our reading, our math. We at the bottom of the map every year consistently. We so proud of being retarded. I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting dumb. I'm out my mind. Out my I will, mind. I will beat the skin. <laughs> you ain't, you ain't, I will beat the skin off my 16 year old son and my 12 year old daughter. I will beat the skin off them. I hear them playing that song. Who, who no, sang that song? By the way, <laughs> who sang that? By the way, same thing. Kofi, like, who the fuck? Let your son or daughter listen to that dumb Kofi. shit. Look, People need to teach their kids words have power. You yes. cannot speak that type of negativity you are over life yourself. and yes. over and over. Yes. Shit. Um, like a mantra. Because I'm going to beat your ass. Like a mantra. Uh, I want to ask y'all a question to keep it, keep the questions going, right? Um. So besides just doing y'all show on the platform, y'all also actually go to like book events, man. And our platform is big on knowledge. It's big on books. Not many of us, including myself, I have never gone to a book event in my life give us what that's like give us the the advantage of it the pros of actually going traveling paying the money whatever give us that so sarita's actually very organized and she tends to have like our calendar planned out for the next year sometimes something might pop up but she i'm the coach she plans out oh, our us. i'm her, the coach she is she plans oh, out our you the red, the red ranger you the red ranger <laughs> hey, she plans out our book event seasons for the next year. Um, for most events, you kind of pay in advance. Um, Sarita saves so that we have money to buy books. Um, so that part's easy. We like to do things a certain way, and that's where it gets complicated because <laughs> we have to coordinate every outfit. 
Um, like right now, we both wearing Barbie shirts. Like it, it's a thing, <laughs> right? So we kind of have a system with packing and all these things. But being at a book event is it's everything. You get so immersed in the culture. You get to be around like minds. How we were just talking about you don't see people reading. We've been at book events where I've seen someone sit down in the corner and start reading the book they just purchased. And they all look like us. Every Everyone. single person there looks like us. I don't have to curve my speech. I don't have to cold switch. I don't have to do anything. It's being around like my And we've seen men there, actually. Yes, we have. There have been men at those book events. Um, hey, so me and me are y'all right most... now, I want to come. Send me the calendar. I want to come to some next year. I want to be... I will send you the calendar. Um, me and Nikki mostly read um, independent authors. Mm -hmm. um, we will read some mainstream, but we really prefer to have it be more independent. It's just kind of what we like. I don't know. Um, so it's even more awesome to see that these women are putting on these phenomenal events mm -hmm. and they're not having the backing that you would have if you were a white woman. If you or were a writing, traditionally published author. You know, if you had a white woman on your cover, how much more you'd get. These women are putting not just skinny black women on the cover. They're putting thick black women. They're putting bald-headed women. They're putting women with gaps. They're putting, they're putting with women dreads. with dreads, with like, glasses. The representation is so beautiful and to see. And, you know, Kofi has spoken about in the past, like, showing up for authors in a way of purchasing their books off their websites. You know, truly full and so it's something to look an author in the eye and be like, I admire your writing. I love this book. And for them to sign it to you. Like, mm -hmm. it, it's not the same as um, just ordering it to show your support physically. To know, like, I drove. I flew. I took the bus. I walked down here to be able to see you. It just hits different. And when you get to have that hug, it's just a camaraderie that you don't get anywhere else. And especially... Um, we live in Las Vegas, right? I'm not going to say there's not a lot of Black women because there are. But it's also a lot of where we work, right? So where I work, there are only three Black girls. Three. Three. And I'm one of them. Like, and they are different ages. They're not really into the reading. So it's like um, being around actual... I mean, it's like hundreds of women that just look like you. And it's a good it's vibe. An experience it's a that good energy. Like... It, there, there's nothing like it. No. It's an experience that I honestly feel like I wish for every every yes. black person. Yes. yes, I'm trying to I'm trying to paint the picture with words. They got to go to y'all page and see this content, bro. They be having like an all out DJ. They got brunch. It's all kind of food. They cutting up. They got different themes that they're wearing every day. Look like it's a mm -hmm. whole entire Super Bowl of books. Yes, I'm going next year. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling up next year. I'm pulling up. It's different. Pulling up. Everyone hosts differently. Like, so, um, there's one next year that's like, is like Southern Bell themed. Mm -hmm. And so it sounds like everyone's going to show up in their Sunday best with the big hats and gloves. And that's our kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. So everyone kind of hosts differently. You put your own mark and spin on it. Like, it's just, it's a fun place to be. The one we went to um, in June, um, or July, I'm sorry, it was an Alexandria House event. Um, one of her book series is a HBCU. So for all of us that have never, some of us never have been to an HBCU. Mm -hmm. Some of us have been. So it was like a true life homecoming. Um, there was a marching band you know what i mean it it was so phenomenal like you travel back into the 90s because there was like a mm. 90s dress See? attire they had spray painted hats like and when you're going to these events you think that it's just going to be a regular here you go sign this and that no we're dancing we're talking yeah. you're truly bonding with people and to the see their husbands there is so it melts your heart every time the husbands are like come on get in let me get a picture of y'all taking the pictures the support that they support. have is phenomenal mm -hmm. i feel like we sleep on support um as the in the yes. black community yes um, yes and when, let, let me say this let, let yeah. me say this you said you y'all you and uh your sister y'all y'all mentioned um purchasing from the author um you mentioned support right mm -hmm. um that is um I'm 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 continuing to uh push this because if you want to support an author I always say patronize the author directly mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so in order for an author to be successful especially if you like his work or you like her work 
right? They need funding to do these things that you're talking about, right? So, mm -hmm. you, so you can help them where you can go get this 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 experience that y'all said that y'all have. If you if you rock with this the person's writing in the book, uh, uh, rock with the person or buying into that author, support mm -hmm. his work by going directly. If they send you to these print on companies, then do that. But always check in with them first to buy yeah. directly from them because it's an investment. They want to recoup their investment, but they also want to invest in other things, i.e., do things where they actually giving back. It takes money to do these book festivals. You yep. know, dancing, yes. all these types of things. It's the investment. It's the investment. So we, so we have to support. So yeah. everybody that hasn't come in contact with me, I buy their books. Every everybody can tell you if they have a book out right now, and I had a conversation with them, whether I read it or not. It's about supporting the author. I buy books from everybody else. Why not go and support these other people? I'm an author. Right. I understand how it is when you support the person, you yes. know what I'm saying, directly, you Direct. know, mm -hmm. directly. So it's important. And we have to get better than get better with that in our community. We have to start supporting mm -hmm. each other. So I believe in if somebody buys my book, I'm going to buy their book. I'm going to buy their book. That's we we have to do. You we, we have to stop being on the receiving end. Mm -hmm. Most of the people in this community, they, even you know that I'm I noticed in the book community that a lot of them want they want to receive but they don't want to give they want mm -hmm. you to continue to purchase their product and continue to purchase their, their their publications but they're not willing to do the same thing back man so we have to get better at supporting each other where we able to put on these things where we can you know where people can come out that that loves how we write loves our publications mm -hmm. love what we're doing come out and we can touch them but it takes money and it takes right. supporting one another reciprocal it's business is the book mm -hmm. business I keep on stressing that the book business not just books right uh i want to touch on something that they just said with that whole event man that's awesome bro I've been having this conversation in, in private in little whispers, but we have a platform to bring it to the to the public. A lot of our audience are non-fiction readers. We like our history and science and all that stuff. But I noticed in the fictional world, they have a whole world they make around these publications. They got these wonderful mm -hmm. book box, y'all the book box things y'all do, the, the unboxing. Another part of <laughs> Sydney Read, they unbox these books. They got candles that coincide with the book. They got all kind of mm -hmm. other little trinkets and things like that. And that's why I was so big on Kofi and I doing one for the modern day Greek Eye book because I've never seen a non-fiction book for a box in my life. Not the 1619 Project, not South to America. I can't name any major non-fiction book that had um a book box and everything go along with it. And the non-fiction mm -hmm. kind of like, all right, here go the book. There's right. no experience around it. Mm -hmm. In the fictional world, they give you all five senses to connect with that character and get into that into that situation. So we got to all get better in the non-fiction guys to have events like that. They're all dressing up and getting in character and having different themes. I've never in my life heard that on the non-fiction side, ever. Yeah. Peace, 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 Barry. We we go into the book. We go into the Baldwin book, uh, uh, bookstore. If you talk about the Baldwin bookstore in New Orleans, we definitely going next month. We we going to support that business. And while I was gone, I also that's something that I do as well. Um, if I go out of town, I make it my business to go find a black owned bookstore and purchase. Like I was just in Houston, so I, I I made it my business to go to the Black Lit Bookstore. There's not many bookstores in Dallas, but I went to the two that I found, the Black Black Lit Bookstore, and I purchased some books. And then I had my book signing uh, for me and Sean's book at the Pan African Connection Bookstore. And I made sure that I, I spun quite well with them on books and other stuff that they had out there. So uh, most definitely. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, oh, no. Nah, that was, is important. Yeah. Even for me, the things that I take away from the events, right? These writers are romance writers, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like you don't go get advice for your homegirl who always fucking single. Bitch, why am I going to ask you for anything about me and my man? Because you can't help me, right? You don't do that. That's just dumb. Why the fuck would you do that, right? So when you go to these events, okay, y'all laughing, but I'm just being honest. When you go, to, you're not going to ask your, all right, you know what? 
when you go to these events and you see that their husbands are there and they are supporting them, getting them water, making sure they've eaten, making sure that they're like, okay, the line is over here. They're collecting the money. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, so you know what? It, a lot of people are like, romance isn't real. Those books are fake. That's not true. You just haven't experienced it yet. Yes. The way, to me, the support, that man standing there, taking his day off, yes. driving or flying, doing whatever he has to do to make sure that he is supporting his woman throughout this. He may have his own damn job, right? Sure. They may got kids at home. They had to get a babysitter. It's the support. And that is what is so sexy and so lacking in our community. A lot, not all Black men want to support you until it's time to support you. But even the sisterhood. Women too. Even the sisterhood, I feel like we, everyone likes to talk about showing up and talk about supporting Black businesses and all these things until it's time to do it. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to go to a place where you know these people are there to support you. It's nice to be the, I feel like, in my humble opinion, to be the author and see these people excited to meet you. Mm -hmm. Even like us going at, we're just going there to be patrons and people will be like, oh my goodness, it's Cynthia Reed. And we like, fall no. out every time. Y'all superstars, no. man. It's the, it's the Y'all superstars. It's the culture. It's the love. It's so genuine. It's so real. It's being able to talk to someone about a series that they read too and like getting deep dive into it. And a lot of times at the events that we go to, there's also other black yeah, owned businesses. Is. They have, huh? <laughs> Isn't she's 100 uncut, raw, and intelligent? Travis love that. Travis love that. Look at it. He love that. He love it. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you. But a lot of times when you go there, there are other black owned businesses. Like mm -hmm. we met someone that was doing waist beads and she gave us a whole reason for waist beads, right? Mm -hmm. We just bought them because they look cute on our waist. But she was like, oh no, this one is for weight loss. This one is for fertility. So it was like a lesson. And then mm -hmm. we met someone that was selling lip gloss and these are all other black owned businesses. So even if y'all do take it as far and start doing the nonfiction ones, I think y'all should even incorporate the community. Like there's mm -hmm. a lot of things we want to buy black, right? But Amazon makes it so easy. So yeah. if you made it where Sarita could go and get this, you know, oh, Sean and them got pins. God damn it, I need one of their pins. I'm going to do that. I'm going to wait the extra time because I want to support y'all. So mm -hmm. add that into it when y'all create. Oh, we don't, we, we, you know, when you purchase something, we don't, we don't, we don't wait. Like you go, we are, I got a platform if you want where, you know, provide books, our books. I don't play about them books. You know, you purchase something, I ship them. I, I go the next day, even though right. the website say three to five days to ship out. I go the next day because I know the person want their product. I receive their money. I need to get their product to them. So I do that mm -hmm. with my apparel company. Same thing, the same thing, though I go through a third party, but I keep them involved. I don't necessarily mm -hmm. ship my merch off myself. They do it, but it's a great turnaround. And I give you a step-by-step -step and the company gives you a step-by-step. -step. So within a week, you got your product. You know, you got right. you got your shirt, your hat, whatever. So we make sure that the people get what they get. We don't, we ain't those type of black owned businesses where you wait, you order something, it'd be three weeks before you get your stuff. We don't do that. We we definitely well, I, I don't mean it like that, but you know what I'm saying? And I appreciate that, Kobe, because that is me. I am on top of it, right? So I appreciate that, but I am willing to do a little bit, take a little time to buy black. But I also need it to be get shown to me yeah, because I don't, don't know. know where you don't at. know what you don't know. Um, um <clears throat> I'm sorry. Oh no, go ahead. I was just gonna ramble. Is it on me, Kofi? The next question? No, you don't answer. You don't. You you and you you did my question and then you <laughs> did your question. Yeah, you did number. You did you did number. I like I red or yellow. Did, okay, red, sir, sir. Yellow is Shanathan and red is Kofi. Oh, it's that was doing with the color. Okay, yeah, that's what I was I doing know. with. The, I okay. said, "Look at him. He just done took over the whole okay. thing." But I go ahead. Go ahead. Go. Go. <laughs> hey, hey, Kofi. I, I insist. I insist. <laughs> right. Oh man, oh man. I, I'm having fun, y'all. I'm, I'm definitely having fun. I'm learning a lot from you, uh, from you, uh, beautiful women. Um, so you know, um. And this is a question, for, you know, th this is Sean's question, but this is something <laughs> that we talked about. But we, this is something that we talked about, and this is something that you all could help me out with. So what is the advantages of auto books, and how do you go about notating, uh, notating if you are listening, right? So 
Um, I, I, I think this was a this is a great question because this question is gonna help me out. Um, um, I I do audio book, but I don't do audio books a lot. I'll be honest, I'm a physical reader, I like touching the book, you know. Mm -hmm. I got tons of uh other books on my Kindle, you know. I read them if I need a book. If I'm doing some research, I'll buy a book so I can have it instantly because I don't want to wait. I'll start reading from my Kindle. Um, and you know, sometimes I buy audio book. You know, I hear Sean talk about the audio books, and he send me stuff when they free and so, but um, I still have a problem with you know listening to them and you know learning how to notate and do things. So, you know, again, the question is, what is the advantage of auto books and how do you go about notating it if you are listening? So one thing that audio books, I feel like the benefit for a writer to put their book on audio is it opens you up to a whole new audience. Yes, there are some people like myself, I'm dyslexic, but there are other people that are hearing impaired, I mean, that are Sighted vision impaired. impaired. There are people that are mothers who have little kids at home that don't have time to sit down and read a book. Um, there are people that just don't want to buy a book. They don't have room to have all these books piled up everywhere. Um, it's not just for um, enjoyment, right? If you are a person that genuinely struggles with reading, um, a person that struggles with reading or can't see for that matter, when somebody, a good narrator is reading a book to you, the book comes alive. It becomes mm -hmm. visual. So then when you go back, you can tell the story as if you just watched a movie. A lot of times I think people forget that audio is just as important as physical um, because, or like visual because um, it starts to play, right? So then you can definitely read, what am I trying to say, Nikki? When you try to, you can you can give it back easily, right? Because you've actually you experienced discuss it, discussed it, you've experienced it. So um, Nikki likes to do where she reads and listens. So the audio will be playing, but she's also reading the words. To your point, Kofi, I'm not the person that can annotate and from just audio. I I need the words. Um, I do love the storytelling aspect of it, so I love to have both. But if I had to pick one or the other, I would pick words. But Sarita, like, I'll, I'll be like, how are you just listening? Because how do you know if they're saying this in their head or they're saying out? Like, those nuances. But some people thrive in the audio space. I can do yeah. about six books a week. It, and that's on the low end. Yeah, she, she flies. She fly. So, so, wait a minute. Sip the read. Tell the audience, how many audio books do you have in your audio library? Let's talk about that. Let's find out. So I actually have a lot of audio um, applications, but on Audible for the sake of Amazon, because they are running everything. Um, on Audible, I have right now 615, 615 audio books. I have not listened to all of them, but I do have that many. I don't mind spending my money. If I like something, I buy it. Um, and I understand that they're expensive for authors to make. So mm -hmm. I appreciate when they do, especially if they're an indie author, I hurry up and buy it. Because yeah. I know how much money it costs you to do this. So I want you to know that I appreciate you and I pray yeah. that you make more. Yeah, so we're all definitely buying audio books off the side. I want to speak on the annotation piece because it's kind of new to my life as a, as a reader. So um, on Audible in particular, but I'm sure on different audio apps, there's a different kind of application like this. You can literally take notes in Audible. Mm -hmm. It's the actual little thing you click on and the whole little thing pop up. And you can type in your notes in Audible and then when I finally get home, if I have the physical version too, I go back to that particular chapter, that page, and I can go in my book and actually write my notes later on that evening or the next day. But I'm literally driving around, get to a stoplight, and they said something. I'm at a stoplight, like, put a note right quick and then drive off. You know what I mean? So you, you can really annotate in Audible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I just found that out um, recently, um, reading one of your books, Sean, you know, for me to write the the uh the forward in the book and I hit some by accident and it popped up. Even I didn't even know you can highlight, you know, and mm -hmm. I just I said, damn, you can highlight and you can take notes. So that helped me out too. I I like to write on paper too, but I mm -hmm. did I did take some notes in there too. And I took the same notes that I typed in, I transferred it to the paper as well. So it, you know, so it uh, helped me as, as well. But yeah, I didn't know you can do the annotation. Yeah. Um, through that until just recently, right? Could y'all also speak to like different because see, audio listening is a whole different universe. I have a whole mm -hmm. pocket of friends that audio is they that's their jam, 
They got their own terminology. They got their own things they talk about. So talk about audio listening speed. Because to a person that don't listen to audio books or they kind of new to audio books, they don't understand how some of us have gotten to a point to where we're, we're playing with the speed now. So I'm not playing with no speed. I want to hear every single word. I want to hear the huff. I want to hear the moan because I'm reading romance, mind you. So there's, there's going to be some lights there. So I want to be, I'm not in the dark. I want all the lights on. I want to hear every single thing. So I'm not jumping to speed. But you can listen to different speeds at different ranges. We have our favorite narrators. Certain narrators can elevate a book to a thousand. Yes. Other narrators can drop a good book down to where it's like, why did I even buy that? Um, I really like to listen to black voices, read black books. So I search out for that and it will turn me all the way off. If I'm reading a black, uh, supposedly this is a black author, these are black characters. And then the man gets on there and he's like, but then I said to her, I want to touch your breast. We don't talk yeah, oh, like yeah, that. Yeah. Oh, like it that. will ruin Please everything. don't say it. Please don't say what they said. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I ain't gonna say nothing. Come back. No, 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 no. You, no, you good. You good. I thought you were finna go into you know how we really be talking. Because <laughs> you remind me of my you remind me of my wife so much. I'd be like, God, leave your mouth. <laughs> Honestly, I think that um, Kobe Nikki got a list. She'll literally be like, "Sweetie, don't you get on there and say that? Don't you say that? Don't you say this? And you better not do that." And I'm like, "Oh, you have y'all believe I'm so villainous? Tell us it. it. <laughs> That's not that, that list right there. Don't oh, say it. Yeah. Oh, it. <laughs> you know, I think authors who there's so many authors like, "Oh yeah, I don't really listen to audiobooks. I just put them on there." This is true. It's nice to have an audio book, but the wrong narrator can destroy yeah. your book. Just so, like the right narrator can elevate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's they have yeah. crazy They followers. even have audio. They have audis. They have awards for narrators. Like, yes. it, it's a whole it other it's world. It's truly an yeah. art form. It is. It is. What's the what's the yeah. difference? You know what I'm saying with the right narrator. So what what is the right oh, narrator? Oh, oh my god! Okay, so yeah, I'm I, I mean, because I'm a long oh my narrator. God. But like Jacoby Diem, yes, Wesley Siobhan, those yes. two names. If you get one of them, everybody's gonna, gonna buy your book. If you get book. both of them, you're sold out in a week. I promise you. It, it, it's not even truly just that, right? Because there are other narrators that, that are, not, are not Wesley and they are not Jacoby. And they are James very, good. very good. Their narrators, like True Taylor, is amazing. Yes, Jason Michaels. What they are is, it's they they really read their, their stories. stories. They're not just saying like, and he went to the store. They're like, I was going to the store. They're bringing it's it to life. It's almost like you like they in the booth just vibing. It's yeah. just something yeah. about the way that it almost makes you feel that they appreciate your work. They yeah. like your work, so they right. read it from their heart. It wasn't yes. like they were reading. I, I got you. Yeah, and for because sure. they're engaged, you're engaged. Mm -hmm. I want to say something to this too, right? What I like personally, the past I want to say three to five years, a lot more authors are reading their own books. So my favorite audio books ever is whenever the author is reading their own because the the voice inflections and the 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 emphasis on certain things you know what you wrote how you wrote it mm -hmm. so to hear Jasmine Ward uh, her book came out recently Let Us Descend to hear Jasmine Ward reading her own book I'm playing it again I finished it two days ago I went straight back to chapter one because she narrated it so well uh, Clinton Smith another big time author reading his own work. Both of those authors, award-winning authors, they could have been narrators mm -hmm. and not written books. Like they, they narrate that good with their voice and the control and the inflections and it just... It's definitely an it, art it, it's form. Amazing. It's amazing. It's an art yeah. form. Um, and I do feel like a lot of people are sleeping on it. Um, if you were to listen to audio books, right? Because everybody says, I can't read a book. I don't have time. I can't do this. I got to go. You can put an audio book in in the car. Yeah. You can put yep. it while you're cleaning, while you're yep. cooking. In the gym? Like, there, you can always find a way. But I feel like if you say like, hey, here, there's this physical book. A lot of people are like, when am I going to read that? I got to do this. I have to do that. I have to do this. I have to do that. So sometimes it makes it just more accessible yeah. to the masses. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. like you said, a lot of women are doing everything in the home. There may not yeah. be a man, so they don't, yeah. A1 can't buy the physical book and the audio, so they don't have to choose one. Mm -hmm. And yeah. physical books is going yeah. up in price. Yeah. 
yes, with, it is. you know, all of the paper yes, and is. all the different things. Yes, it is. Yeah. I want, I want to add on to something you, you said earlier. I want to kind of build on that, right? You said, I don't want to speed it up. I want to catch every word and everything, right? Mm -hmm. I want to speak on what you said about just now. Right. Yeah. Well, have, imagine listening to the Griot book narrated by Kofi. That's it's coming. Right. It's coming. Kofi, he should narrate. It's coming. We 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 spoke on that in private, but now we just said it. So yeah, we we plan on doing the audio book. Kofi got the whole. You can see the Kofi background. Kofi got the uh, Starship Kofi Enterprise at his house. So I plan on going over there and uh and getting it in with the brother. But no, I was trying to say, you can play an audio book. People think you got to sit down and close your eyes. And just hear this book, like no, your mind and your ears catch way more than you realize. You can really just put it on and do your day to day activities, and your subconscious mind is picking up more than what you realize. So, don't be scared to think like, oh man, how I'm gonna play the audio book? And like, no, just put it on, do what you're doing, do laundry, wash the dishes, clean the floor, whatever, and you you catch more than what you realize. No, and I, there are some that I I'm telling you. I have listened to certain audiobooks once a month. I'm just like, I got to listen again. I got to listen again. And the narrator is so bomb that they have brought this story to life that now someone like me who struggles can literally be like, oh, wait, you know what? I've actually seen this word. Now I can, I've heard this word. So maybe a certain word that I probably would not have been able to just immediately know what it was. I'm like, oh, wait. I've heard that before, and now it kind of comes to me in a way. Does that make any sense? Let me tell y'all, for the past two months, when I get off in the morning and driving home, on Audibles, they have a whole X-Men, the Marvel Comics X-Men, mm -hmm. they have a whole X-Men series on Audibles. And this dude is narrating so good, it is just like you sitting there watching a Marvel movie. Like, People, the some of them effect. are really phenomenal. His sound effects is yeah, missing. Yeah, that's Kiyoshi. Yeah, that was a good one. That was a good one. People sleeping one. on these animes that they're putting on actual automated, not automated, what am I trying to say? Automated. Animated, like, things on audio. Like, they're really good. It's like, it, I it had no idea. back to a time where wow. there was no TV and families yeah, just, sat around yep. and listened at the radio. Mm -hmm. like, That's right. And you sat right. there and was like, oh my gosh, because it, you heard it, right? They're doing it, it in a way that feeds your imagination. It was your imagination, imagination exactly. right? And that, imagination. so even if I was listening to Captain America, in my mind, Captain America is black. I just heard this man, but he's a black man. I, I, that's what I've heard. But now the TV has shown me Captain America is white. So if you're listening or reading something, it's whatever you want. Whatever you want. You create you want. the space. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. And I'm going to get, um, when we get off, I want to get two books out of your books. I'm gonna buy one tonight. I got a lot of work to do tonight in my office. I'm gonna um I'm gonna try to listen to an audio book and and uh, oh, Kofi, I'm gonna buy you one. Let me buy you my favorite. Yeah, let, let her do it, Kofi. She so she, she send me your email. Yeah. Okay, I, all right. I'm gonna send you my email. I'm sending it to you. Kofi, she is it's a wonderful. Gonna, it's gonna be a romance, Kofi. You gonna love. It's one of my very favorite books. Kofi, Watch, she is a wonderful. Kofi. She is a wonderful gift giver. She's a very giving, kind heart, amazing person. Very, mm -hmm. very good. And Thank COVID you. mentioned it in passing, kind of glossed over it. But yes, I have two audio books as well. I went to the studio. I did my thing with the audio books. So yes, you can get some of these Sean P books in audio. Give them, give them the two books that you have in audio, Sean. In audio, I have The Five Laws of Leadership and I have The Butterfly Effect in audio. And we have listened to both of those. And I plan on going, uh, Kofi and I, like I said, we're going to do the modern day griot. We're going to get in the booth and uh, get it in, man. That's, That's going to be amazing. Yeah. Yep. Um, so this is the last one. And we we, we, we on annotation. You know, we, I kind of been watching a little bit through, you know, you're on your YouTube channel. Uh, so Sarita, you just, you know, a couple of months ago, you started, you started on your annotation journey, right? Uh, yeah. Can you explain? Can you first, can you explain what annotation is? And then can you walk us through how your journey being so far? Um, so y'all know I didn't read a lot back in the day. So I only did what I had to do as far as reading, right? So Nikki actually is so smart, y'all. Like when I tell y'all this girl is smart, Nikki's really, really, really smart. Like super, so that's how big her brain is. She's so fucking smart. So when I, Nikki always used to tell me, how big you it is? like annotating. 
Huh? How big it is, Rita? How big it is? So big. <laughs> she has such a big brain. <laughs> Nikki used to tell me, Sarita, you would like to annotate because I, I, I don't care if I'm reading anything, a, a recipe. I like to break it down and know all the pieces and the parts of everything. So Nikki was like, Sarita, you really going to like annotating? And I was like, girl, I don't even know what that is. So through my research, I have discovered <laughs> that annotation is really just the way that you break down a story and how you receive it. Things that are important to you, things that need to you want to remember or like the way that I've been annotating is I want to be able to give my book to Sean and him be able to be like, wow, I know exactly where she was thinking at that point. Like I really want to break it down to understand annotation and the it's been interesting doing it with nonfiction things um it ain't been an easy journey y'all it ain't been easy <laughs> um as you an know. audio oh i'm sorry no no i was just gonna say you i i i was i was looking at one you well two of them you just an old deed i just uh <laughs> nikki said you over you will go over you or overdo something. She yeah. say, I don't hear her say that a lot about you. So I, I, I'm i kind of believing it. When I seen all that stuff, you were oh, buying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You buying she got, she got Amazon. She got Amazon oh, hot. So, so, oh, so, so, Rita, to anybody watching it, and they say, you know what? That sounds good what she just said. I want to start annotating. What is like three or four things you would tell the person? Like, all right, you want to start tomorrow? Like, do this. I suggest this. What, what, okay. what would that be? So um, what I would say for someone who's just now starting out, these are things that no one told me. Um, you don't need all that shit. <laughs> no <laughs> one told you that? You don't need all that no shit. No one told you that? But for real. Nice I know for a fact. fact I told you. I, I know, know I told you that a few times, It's child. nice to have <laughs> it, though. Okay? Fact. It's nice to have it. But I was I on Pinterest say. and so-and-so did. <laughs> it, it, it's nice, right? What I would say is you need to have... Um, you need to have a clear vision of what you're trying to do. Um, what are you trying to focus on? What is it really about? What are you focusing on that's important? Why are you doing it? Um, and I don't think you need all the things. I do feel like you at least need four highlighters. You need four highlighters because there's going to be four different points. Um, when I narr when I do my um, annotations, I also like to do a journal, but I'm very, I'm a creative, person like I need an outlet so I needed all that extra stuff right so that I could go back and you know do all these things but in actuality you don't need that you really just need vision and I feel like also a safe space to do so um I, I told you guys I'm a mother and my kids be like mom 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 like let me let me live right so I needed a place to just do me. So once they go to sleep, like that is my unwinding time. And again, as a person who mostly listens, it's also helped me sharpen my reading skills as far mm -hmm. as getting faster with reading um, and even more comfortable to talk about books. Um, so I feel like it's just, you mm -hmm. need to just do it. If you want to annotate, just, just do, do it. it. Like so just you, do it. You mentioned a space. You have an actual annotation desk. I have an annotation. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. That, that, that just happened. Yeah. 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 That, that, that's interesting, though. You said that's interesting. I don't think I ever heard nobody say that. Read and then go back and write in a journal after you yeah. read. So you're reading and then oh, you're writing in a journal. Yep. After that's interesting. I've never oh, heard. You got to see it, though. You got to see it, though. You got to see it, though. I'll send you a few See, pictures, Sophie. I, I feel like bed. it's important it, for me as a person who I, 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 when Nikki said that I go overboard, it's, it's in real life. Like yes. I dissect yes. everything, she not did. overboard. She's extra. There's a difference. Yes. Yes. And I, I oh. my, my great aunt told me <laughs> that it's okay, baby. She said, you are not extra. And she, I said, well, oh. everybody says I'm extra. Auntie. And she said, well, then tell them to go find less. And you know what? I was yeah. like, period. I wasn't there with that. Yeah. So at the end that. of the day, so, um, I, I like to go back and look. And again, right. I told you, I'll re-listen to a book. So yes, I can go do. back and see what I wrote and why it was important. Like, um, I started with the Game of Thrones series. Um, yes. There's actually a page where I, you know, write down a page and I'm like, Robert's a punk ass bitch. So if you... You have the page to go decide for yourself if he's a punk ass bitch, or is that just my opinion? 
So I, I like all it the too. Things you could have said about what happened. I just wanted Kofi to know. So if you were reading my journal, Kofi, you could go back exactly to where I was and see where I was at at that moment. That's the goal, anyway. And so I'm trying for the listening audience, anybody hearing it on the podcast later on for sure, please go to their page and scroll around. Like you got to visually see everything we're talking about. The the, the SIP report, y'all have a newsletter, the, the, the annotation station, you got to go and see it. I'm trying to do justice by voice, I'm trying to make them des describe it, but they got a lot of things going on with the SIP to read sisters. Amazing. Hey, Kofi, I feel like you could... um excuse me, benefit from the journaling. Being as though the types of books that you and Sean read, I feel like the journaling probably would be really good for you guys, especially you know on crazy? the discussion process of things. Mm -hmm. If you ever saw my books, it's crazy. I don't have a literal journal. I'm doing all of that inside the book. Yes, oh, yeah, the, the same here. Uh, well, I, I can't inside the book. I'm, right, I'm, I can't I'm, do I'm, a lot. I draw, I right. draw, I stencil. I, I'm, I'm doing everything inside the book. That's crazy. See, yeah, I, it's real. It's real. Yeah, now nah, this, this is my thinking, right? I have enough bookshelves, and I need some more bookshelves. Back to that. I'm not imagining. I'm gonna have all these bookshelves, and then all of these journals to coincide with all of these books. That's a lot going on. Well, you would keep the well, you, can, you don't have to do one journal for each book. Honestly, you would keep them together. One book, one journal could probably hold house twelve books. I'm learning that. I didn't know that in the beginning. That's something else that I had to learn. And again, it might be too much or something somebody oh. else wouldn't do, but it's the way oh, I do. might. Huh? Look what Billy said. I don't know when we read the Griot together last oh. month. Thank oh, you, Billy. I love that. That's hot. That's, That's amazing. Hot. I do. Uh, I love it. Yeah. It's so actually much. really nice. The Her aesthetic and the way she um sets up her journals even stories that i have not read yet going through her journal i feel like i get immersed in the world she has a great eye so the journals are if nothing else they're aesthetically pleasing to look at yeah. thank you You're welcome. it's a gift man it's yeah a I'm, gift. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try it. i'm definitely gonna try it, but i do the same thing as i was trying to see if i could find a book that was in here that i could have grabbed to show you with the like you talk about the different highlighters i try to keep uh uh Different highlighters. Right now, I don't have but my orange, my orange and my yellow highlighter, and my favorite pen that I like to use. And I'll take notes and write definitions down. So I mark up my book. People say you shouldn't mark your books up, but I always write. Yeah. I, I write in yeah. the old book, so got to. Um, you know, underline. So. And see, we're talking about like romance being the world to itself. Annotation mm -hmm. is the world to itself. Yes. Uh, uh, um, the audio books is the world. These are separate universes for some people. Mm -hmm. So in the annotation world, we are big on like where you getting your stickers from, where you getting your sticky notes, where you getting your markers and how. Like this is big conversations going on back and forth. Like where you get that from? I gotta go and get that. So for my book club books, I try to find a, a, a pen that coincides with the cover of the book. Every book, no matter what oh, yeah. it is. I'm, I'm big on that. My I like my my. Journal to match. I want the highlight. Yeah, you all big on that. I want the <laughs> you bookmark to match. And do you know? I, I'm, I don't it's know if y'all be watching the, the YouTube or not. I only listen to audiobooks, so I never thought bookmarks mattered. Like I was buying books, but I was never reading them. I was just and she has the story people bookmark by the way. Time, we <laughs> we have discussed what kind of merch if that we can do. I said bookmarks. And when I tell you, my sister jumped down my throat and was like, bookmarks are lame. The, all these things, right? Wow. All these things going down the list. Attack, and I'm wow. like, whoa, okay. I'll just yeah. keep a bookmark for myself. Yeah. So now she's like, okay, I'm going to annotate. And I'm just waiting for my moment to finally have my day of reckoning. So yeah. I go, sister. She's like, yes. All high and mighty with all her pretty highlighters. You know it. You know I it. Say, how are you going to save your place in your book? And she's like, what are you talking about, Nikki? I said, it's not audible. They don't hold your place. <laughs> she literally was like, oh, I'm going to need a book. <laughs> Kobe, uh -huh. I, I grabbed some of my pearls. Kobe, I grabbed some of my pearls. Like, uh -huh. what? I didn't know. And then they got the nerve to be expensive. <laughs> like, they can be. They can be. They can be. I was like, what? And my sister being my sister, her bookmark has to match everything. So yes. she's not just going to use a receipt or something like the average day book reader. As physical yes. book readers, we know 
When you anything. need something to hold your anything. place, you just grab something anything. that's gonna be thin and thick. I might grab a whole tripod. It's bigger than that. You know what I'm saying? Hey, like you know, you thank, thank you, Kofi. You I know, you know right? <laughs> you gonna put something in there. So I love using uh, watching uh, her beer. struggle, oh, trying to find the right bookmark for each book. It it does something happy to my heart. It I does. Some and then it comes to shut. I forget that I still got to put it inside there, and then I close it, and I'll be like, "Damn it!" <laughs> oh, wait, I, I got, I got a picture. I got a picture. Nothing for me. It, it, I'm gonna make a, 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 a TikTok. Real reader problems when your damn bookmark is gone and you don't. You know. You should. You should. I'm but, doing. But check it out. I got. I got something for you. I right? just got hype. I realized this months ago. If you're annotating the book as you're reading, right? You're marking it, little tabs and all of that. I don't need a bookmark. I know what my last tab was. I know roughly where I was when I stopped the last time. Mm -hmm. she the the tab's going to show me where I, where I read up to. You know what I'm saying? Well, a, a lot of things that I've been um, annotating so far, I, for some reason, I can't never pick a book that only got two damn main characters. I got to pick a book with 12 million characters. So I start to pre-tab if I'm... I'm sorry. Go ahead, Kofi. No, 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 no. I'm listening. I'm just saying that's rough. That's rough. <laughs> Like, how you start off like that, you know? If you so know how many characters movie. inside of Game of Thrones and how many houses and then how many I done seen you know, I seen the series and stuff like that, so I know it's a lot of characters in there. So woo. Yeah, uh, and the book got even more. So. I don't know how to do nothing normal. So I already pre-tabbed the houses or the, the oh, characters. Okay. I already pre-tabbed pre those things yeah. so that I know who's gonna be who. And then when I'm pre actually getting into it, that's when I'm like, okay, there's romance here. There's betrayal here. There's world building here. There's, you know, whatever as I'm going through it. I um it. I love it. So it, it, it it's a process, but I'm I'm only on my second book, as everybody knows. So I'm hoping to get faster at it soon. Um, or even be able to not care so much about everything being perfect. I was gonna say that. That's, I, that's, I that's like the tip. Things. Do less, do less. Do I'm probably not gonna do less because my auntie said if they want less, they should go search mm -hmm. for that. I, I'm not. I, will say man I love for her to see like how she would conquer, like how her mind works conquering a book because that might not yeah. be the way I would have tabbed or broken down the book. So it yeah. is interesting to me to see. Yeah. I love to see other people's annotated books, like what yes. was important and focal a focal point for yeah. you. Yeah. How that was like so second thought to me. So I, I do love to go behind her and just flip through her book. Like, yeah. why was, okay, I see why this quote was like highlighted because this hit, this hit. And then other my stuff man be said, like, what? My man said, I use a swish and sweet rapper for bookmarks. That's, that's Chavis for sure. I love it. Hey, hey, but you it. read it, go and I it. like that shit. That go don't matter. At the end of the day, you probably merely meditating hey. on that shit. Hey, Chavis, hey. I'm going to go. I'm gonna go find me an old crown roll bag somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My go to our receipts because I'm always spending money. Mm -mm, mm -mm. So, what Nikki nope. said though, this is why I love to buy used books way more than brand new books. I love to read annotated books. Mm -hmm. And so, my friend Sarah over there in Japan right now, hey, Sarah, Sarah sees me. Yeah, Sarah. She has stuff she, is so she dope, y'all. Yeah. She's the annotation like goddess. So Sarah mm -hmm. sent me her old book. Oh, yes, her and Mika. So mm -hmm. another, I'm reading a book she sent me. I'm in the margins, like I'm debating with her via annotation. Mm -hmm. Either though she I can't see it, but I'm going back and forth with her via her annotations in, in, in the book that she gave me. So it's it's a whole other world, man. What? Didn't you tell mm -hmm. me she was supposed to be annotating our book? Yeah, she is. I, I think she already did it. It's past tense. I think she did it already. Okay, okay. Yeah, will, I'm, I'm going to talk to her about it. it. Yeah, I would love to see I know see Serena it. was going to do it. Yeah. I still am, but I need my colors, y'all. I can't just do. I'm only on, I'm only on book two, y'all. You know, but I yeah. am going to do it because I really would like to. It would actually be my first nonfiction book, so I definitely wow. want to. Um, no speaking no of pressure. annotations, Kofi, do you need a, when you're listening to an audio? Do you also need the physical book? No, nah, I don't. I can, you know, I just just give you know, I I. I I have in the past had a physical and an audio book, but I don't, I hadn't really listened to a lot of audio books. I probably, let me see. I probably done, since I've been an avid reader, I'll be honest, I probably ain't listened to probably about four audio books, maybe five at the most audio books. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I'm not, I'm always like in the physical books. And, and, um, I know I've recently, uh, went back and listened to an audio book that I actually read because I wanted to be up speed 
when mm -hmm. I uh, attended this little uh, event that Dr. Wade had online. Yep. Yep. So Dr. I can Wade, do Dr. Wade, man. Wade. I love hey, Wade. listen, listen, Wade. she gonna be contacting you. I, you know, I, I talked to her yesterday when I was in Dallas and I told her about y'all and how you, you know, how y'all talk about her and admire her. And I said, I you really too. need to, you really, y'all go have to get together and do yeah, something. Y'all should do it too. Oh, oh that would be, that would be so amazing. We're going to make don't. it happen. She said she went. <laughs> she said she went because we, 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 I talked about y'all yesterday to her. And she That'd said, be a you know, know, I didn't know they never did, right? I said, I don't know why, but they told me and Sean, I'm telling you, you need to work with those. I told Dr. Wade. I told Dr. Wade. She is so bummed. Her energy, her, her vibe, vibe she like, is, that, she to me is just, she's like, air mm -hmm. like i could only imagine to be around her like to soak up her presence she's so, oh, consistent, so lucky she's consistent she's consistent bro yeah and i appreciate that i like it consistency goes a long way like what you see is what you get like that's that's what it really is it ain't, it ain't no ass for the camera it's it what it is you know she so gives that, that energy yeah yeah, yeah. that's 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 our she sister is. man i i, I love that i love that young woman I want to give something to Kofi right quick, man, about the audio books. So I started deep in the, digging into the audio books more, having so many interviews to do back to back in a back to back fashion. Mm -hmm. The audio book gave me a chance to have some speed to get through the content before the show versus mm -hmm. I can't really sit down and read 400 pages before the interview. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The audio that's gave me the, uh, the ability the, 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 to get through. That, that, that's right. That's yeah, right. that's that's dope. That's 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 what's that's your real speed, Sean? Oh, that conversation. Okay, so I'm sorry about that, y'all. Reading speed. So I have worked my way up to 1.75. Depending on the narrator, I can do 2.0. Now, I can't do it consistently, but I can do 2.0 if I had to. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I, need, I need you to slow down because I, I want to hear that he bit her ear. <laughs> well, no, no, no. no, no. So, 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 Serena, to that, to that point, when I get to that point, I slow it down. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I can't be in the dark. And then, and then the whenever they finish, I bring it back up. Mm -hmm. So it'd be going fast, and then I hear something like, "Uh, he took off my shirt." Wait, what? <laughs> bring it back. See, I need the build up because I need to know how we get there. When I just said I didn't watch, <laughs> now how you here Marina. now? Clearly, my, you did something that I, 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 I don't mm -hmm. like. It like did, 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 did he grab my neck? He grabbed your neck. What? Wait a minute. See, that, See? that's. Mm -hmm. That's a good time. Yes, that's it. <laughs> she said that's a good time. Kofi, have you read any nonfiction? I mean, any fiction um, on audio? Have you listened? No, I, 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 I have. Kofi, oh Kofi, Kofi wait, you wait, 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 wait. Oh. I got a warning. I got a warning. Kofi, <laughs> I've heard your car. Your car is loud. You got music yeah. and everything. Mm -hmm. If you play on a romance audio book in public with your car. I, I need to have it turned down. To it three. can get tricky. Kofi, not me, you and Nikki having a book club just this fast because I'm about to message you be like, Kofi, where you at? Because now I'm going to read it with you. Okay. Listen, no, no, they, they know you got to be careful so, with the car and the do. audio. No, so in public a story. Oh, really? Do you want to share your story? Let's hear it. Go ahead, sister. You can tell. I have a younger son. Okay, go ahead, Nikki. Tell me the story. <laughs> your son? Where's so, the my nephew walks in before his mom is he's 13 13 he y'all upset he is hot the boy is and like I'm so like, tall okay so you think he my man the way he's talking to me go ahead what's nikki. wrong mommy? like what's going on and he goes she thinks i don't know nikki i'm like you don't know what buddy. like what's going on he said i get in the car and then inappropriate things are being <laughs> <laughs> and my mom's trying to turn it off and turn it off. And when I look at her, I know he was judging her in his eyes because I saw judgment, judgment in his one. eyes as he was telling the story. She, he said, she said it was YouTube. I know YouTube. <laughs> That's not you. <laughs> Kobe, you gotta beware, love the YouTube, Kobe, because the car will pick it up exactly where you left off. Yes, and I is. don't know why she always pauses it when stuff is about to pop off. <laughs> my baby was like mama can you please stop doing this to me mommy i don't like it i said baby i am sorry the youtube he said mom i have youtube i said you don't got this one okay <laughs> <laughs> that's funny that's funny i'll tell you he what ain't buying it. about two months ago because the sip didn't read I'm, I'm, I'm playing the game of thrones audio and i'm i'm, I'm in the store on aisle five by myself <laughs> 
all of a sudden, in the craziest part in the story, a woman come up on that aisle. Mm -hmm. And she heard whenever it was happening, that particular moment in Game of Thrones. And she looked at me like, and then she just walked off like fast. I was like, so embarrassed, bro. I'm like, man. Game of Thrones is 22 hours and some change. Out of all points in the book, she came on that part. Of the game the Lannisters. It was, how you know? It was. Because it's always know? the Lannisters. How you know? It was the Lannisters. That's, that's what it was. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, let's right, get huh? to let's get to uh the last segment okay. of the show. Don't y'all go nowhere, Sarita and Nikki. Don't go nowhere. Um, we it's almost over. It's almost over. Um, I want to highlight well, this segment each at the end of the show, we always want to highlight a woman, right? You know, we, the, our women don't always get that just do, especially in a space that me and Shanathan comes from. We always highlighting and revering black males, right? So we always championing on black males and we don't do enough of championing our black women, right? Because our black women are intellectuals just like we are our black women are smart just like we are our black women are leaders just like our um just like we are right so today let me click the pick up again i'm reading like i said i just started reading uh fictional books right and this again is the real knit the real men knit by Kawana Jackson, right? So Kawana Jackson is a U.S. Today bestseller author and native New Yorker. Uh, Kawana Jackson, a.k.a. K.M. Jackson, spent a uh, formality years uh, on the A-Train where she had two dreams, one to be a fashion designer and two to be a writer. After spending more than 10 years designing women's sportswear for various fashion houses, Kawana took a leap of faith and decided to pursue her other dreams of being a writer, alongside advocating equality and diversity in romance. We need diverse romance. Kawana is the mother of twins and currently lives in the suburbs of New York with her husband. When not writing, she can be found on Twitter uh, and on Facebook. Um, and her website is www.kmjackson.com. She has two books out. Both of those have been bestsellers uh, the one I just showed up, Real Men Knit and uh, Not Again. And mm -hmm. she is, I'm just now getting familiar with her and um, reading her book, man. is um, I'm on chapter four in her book right now. I'm going to try to finish the book um, this week, but she's an excellent writer. Um, I like the characters in the book. Uh, um, I can relate to some of the characters uh, uh, in um, in a book, man. So if y'all want to check this book out, Real Men, um, knit, you know, uh, please uh, hit her up directly on her website. Uh, you know, and if she directs you to Amazon, then go to Amazon. But please patronize her first. This is my highlight, oh. Kawana Jackson. Where'd you, how'd you come across that particular author, uh, Kofi? How'd you come across that, that work? Man, I, I, I be honest with you. I just Googled, uh, bestseller, um, um, uh, um, uh, black women writing novels or some, some kind of, I don't know exactly how I worded it on Google, Okay. but, uh, her and a few other names came up, you know, um, and two of the names I already have their book. Right. And, um, mm -hmm. so, um, I just, I said, well, you know, I read the description in her book and I said, well, I'm going to purchase the book and I want to read the book. I, my goal was to try to finish the book before uh, we did this podcast, but I would eventually have some stuff going on this weekend. So I wasn't able to dive into it deep like I wanted to, to try to finish the book because I just got the book Tuesday. And um, so I'm on chapter four, but like, again, it's an excellent read. It's, it's actually talking about um. A, a woman who adopted um, four boys. She adopted mm -hmm. one boy who is black and white. He's, he's, uh, I don't, I don't, people, yeah, I, I'll say mixed, uh, even though majority when we do DNA, we know majority of his DNA is black. But uh, she also adopted uh, two Asian boys, one boy, both of them brothers who have two different daddies. Um, mm -hmm. One is Asian and black, and one is full Asian, um, which is Korean. He's Korean um another another one i think he's 
a full black and she had this business. So she adopted them as young boys and brought them up through her business. And she eventually a young black girl whose mother worked all the time. This girl started going to this shop that she sells all these knitting equipment and stuff and teaching, uh, do uh, classes with other elders on how to sew and uh, um, sew different things and use yarn and stuff like that. So the girl started working part time with her, but the, and she grew up as a part of that family as well, even though her mother was gone and she got close to the brothers, particularly one named Jesse, who I think mm -hmm. they gonna they gonna end up busting each other down. In, in the book, I believe. Shut the bus so. down. Yeah, Shut bust the bus down. down. Yeah, oh, bust it down. <laughs> yeah, bust it down. Bust it down. Yeah, bust it down. But uh, bust it down. <laughs> so there's life in this book. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I, so it's just lying. a good read. It's just a Come good read. Over. And the lady, the lady over. died. But I like how the lady taught those. She's adopted those boys and taught those boys about morals and principles and how giving back to the community because her store. She always giving back to a community. So I like that aspect of her raising those young boys and 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 was with them till they but she dies. So mm -hmm. now they in a dilemma. Do they sell it or do they continue doing the work that their mother, because she is her mother, she uh their right. mother because she raised them, the kings continue to do the work. So it's an excellent reading, man. I I started, like I said, I got the book Tuesday, mm -hmm. and you know, the last two days. I, you know, I've been digging into it and then Friday and Saturday, I've been going out of town and didn't get a chance and then get back to late. So I tried to prepare, but I'm going to definitely get into it tonight or early in the morning. But that is Kawana Jackson. Y'all check that book out again. It's Real Men Knit and the other book, Not Again. Those are two bestsellers. All right. So my woman historical highlight, I mentioned Eric Jerome Dickey being like the, the, the godfather in urban fiction, in my opinion. For the woman highlight, I got to go to the classical writer named Zane. So many of your present day writers right now, you ask who their influence was, they're probably going to tell you at some point or another, Zane, right? She was on the top too, man. When I Googled that, sure. her name came up. She was on the top. Yep. Oh, gee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Zane is the New York Times bestselling author of Afterburn, uh, The Heat Seekers, The G-Spot, Getting Bug Wild, The Hot Box, Total Eclipse of the Heart, Nervous, Skyscraper, Love is Never Painless, Shame on It All, and the Sisters of APF. I will not tell you what APF stands for on our podcast. But uh, some of Zane's work has also been translated over into a TV series. That's the Sex Chronicles and the Jump Off are featured on Cinemax. Her best-selling novel, Addicted, is a major motion picture by Lion Gate. It was an awesome movie, by the way. So, uh, yeah, that is my background on Zane once again. When I first started being a reader, man, 18, 19, whatever years old, uh, every book that she put out, I was going to get it. Like on publishing day, I'm going to get it. Got to have it. We all passing it around. Like, man, you read that? You got to read this. Like, it was a major deal at that time. Yeah, I, I definitely want to dig into um, her yeah. work, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Sometime um, here in the near future, man. But um, I, I, just, I just say proceed with caution. Yes, I know that. I just that. read my very first Zane book. A Which one? Ago. Which um, one? It was like a, I can't remember the exact name of it, but it was really good. It was like a, um, I guess it was a after Christmas novel or a Thanksgiving about? type novel. I mean, when I tell you, I was like, this was a lot in this little bit of time. And yeah. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah. It was, gotta, again, it was get, my first time you gotta reading more. the Zane book. You got to get more. Okay, get yeah. some of those audio books. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna tap in, man. So um yeah, I love it. That ends this yeah. episode of Let's Stay Together, man. Stay um together, man. I want to say that this was everything that I thought this interview yeah, uh and this show was gonna be. Um, um I really had fun. Yeah. Um, I really learned from y'all. I know uh in the past, you know, y'all had some hesitant of coming on to the show, you know. I don't know and, why. And I don't know why, because we why. learn from each other. Y'all oh, yeah, are brilliant in y'all yeah. own right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And yeah, I, yeah. I, you know, y'all really are. Again, like I said, I want to continue to give y'all y'all flowers. Like I said, I studied y'all for the past two weeks. You know what I'm saying? Studying um, um, both of y'all strengths on what you and uh, your Nikki strength and what Sarita's strength is and how y'all complement each other 
um, um, very well and how y'all finish each other's sentences at times and how y'all can expound and both of y'all can expound and make it interesting, you know, with telling these, uh, these, uh, stories in these, um, I mean, these books and y'all superb breakdown. Right. Um, so, you know, and studying y'all characters like Nikki is kind of the, uh, laid back reserve one and, and, um, Sharita is kind of the rapid fire full of, uh, full of, full of energy, but y'all both, uh, compliment each other. And, um, I, I even like how right now what, um, y'all are doing for as I'm, I'm glad I got Sarita today and not one of those <laughs> other characters. Right. So I even like how you I'm disappointed. dress up, I'm disappointed. Dress up. you know, you dressing up like you owning these characters and you dress disappointed. Up. You so I, I mean it's it's just dope, man. What y'all doing it, and it's just dope of the consistency. I'm a type of person that I love to see someone that be, that's that's consistent. So y'all are consistent with what y'all doing and everything that y'all doing, y'all. I see the elevation every show, every live that y'all do, yeah. Uh, every upload that y'all do, I see the elevation. You know what I'm saying? So I see, okay, y'all are added this. Okay, y'all added this. Okay. Now y'all got the music. Okay, now y'all got uh, yeah. this on here. So it's popular. Um, it's I, I appreciate you know, and it's it, it takes a lot of work. You know what I'm saying? When you bounce them, because y'all bounce from platform to platform, and a lot of times each platform y'all have different content on. Yes, yeah, that's, that's crazy. Platform. So yes. that's just yeah. dope. Y'all work ethic. Yeah. I salute y'all and y'all work ethic, man. That y'all are very impressive. Um, for people that want to go check y'all out on all please. give them all your social media yeah, please, and your youtube please, channel please uh we are sip underscore then underscore read on every platform <clears throat> uh we are on instagram tiktok facebook and youtube and we are working on being consistent in all those things and how <laughs> could they get the, how could they get the newsletter oh um, in our bio, there's a link for the newsletter. Thank you, Shantan. We also have a newsletter. They even <laughs> have a newsletter, bro. That's crazy. They going in. It's We're trying. Crazy. We they we just in. we honestly just want to spread like black women being loved. Um, yeah. And yeah. at the end of the day, like it's not happening enough, right? No, so I no. just that that's what our mission is. Like we want to see black women being loved, but we want all us, aspects in the sisterhood, yeah. in romance, in intimacy, in just life, like every aspect. We really want to build a sister circle. A sister circle. That's the goal. Mm -hmm. When we started Sit mm -hmm. and Read, it was about a community. When we started reading together, it was about a sister circle between mother, daughter, and aunt. And now it's it's grown, and we hope and we pray that it continues to grow. We hope we can get some brothers in there too. It all come on up. come on. I'm up. down. I'm down it's now. I'm down. Be a sibling circle. You so, know, it's, I'm it's honorary. So, I'm right. honorary. Yes, yes, right. yes. honorary. Yes. I'm down. So the next I'm, time y'all have friendly. right. So the next time y'all have one, if y'all want to implement a man or so, you know, I'm holler I'm with. Boy. Yeah, yeah, just holler at us. I'm I, we I'll, out here. I'm, I'll show up. I'll show up. I'll do whatever y'all need me to do. You get know? retarded. Right. Thank you. <laughs> nah, you ain't going to get retarded. Nobody <laughs> doing that shit over here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I still can't believe that. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, we so, want to thank y'all so, so very much. Yes, this um, was so much fun. This was so much fun. We appreciate the seriousness. I mean, Kofi, when I tell you that I love the agenda it was the it agenda was all she talked for me. about. I said, Nikki, you see how just organized? Like, I, I love you. you. Thank you. Appreciate. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. We appreciate y'all yes. for having us on here, especially because it's something that y'all not y'all don't normally do. And I'm I'm sure a lot of people don't be on here calling their homegirls bitches on y'all show. So I appreciate y'all for letting me do that. Thank you. Yeah. How about it? It's <laughs> not you didn't. It's too late. I already it said it. I said it. You didn't try it all. I did try. <laughs> Thank you so well, much. Thank you. All right. And we appreciate it. We appreciate everybody that yeah, you know sure. that, that popped in on the chat. Yeah. Um, Thank a lot you. of people Thank stayed in the duration of the chat. Appreciate the coming yeah. in of the chat. I thought I was gonna get yeah. somebody to call in and maybe ask a question, but they asked all in the in the chat. That's cool. Yeah, the chat Again, was popping. Yeah, the chat was popping. So we'll appreciate. Um, those people in the chat, we appreciate those who may come back later on and look at this episode in the archive. We appreciate you also. That's right. right? So on that note, we want to say peace.
And I, I got my sister, uh, Ladosha, right on here. What she said, she said, peace. Uh, the IG looks good. And African fantastic or something she says. But she just subscribed to y'all um, Instagram. But she also has an um, podcast of uh, the dumbest it ever that black folks say about hair, right? So don't. Oh, boy, I said, oh, oh she can come I anytime. I check that out. Yes, yes, yes. Capitalize it. He said, oh, she can come anytime. Capital letters. <laughs> crazy man so we out of here man peace and we'll see y'all in episode seven peace y'all i'm finna end the stream y'all hold on just one thank you again bye-bye all right